recording. All right, I think we're recording. We're yes, recording. We're recording. Oh yeah, we're yeah. Recording. Uh, Armin is recording the call. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Um. Good. All right. Actually. Do you want Do you want to introduce yourself and tell everybody what we're talking about today? And okay. why? Okay. So I got in contact with Armin to uh, do this quasi, I guess, debate, quasi discussion um, over what I find uh, to be uh, uh, problematic aspects of the supposed enlightenment values that many ex-Muslims seem to be um, pushing forth. Mm. Um, so you have a problem with ex-Muslims and enlightenment values the, uh, the, that they're... You no, know, I don't have a problem with ex-Muslims per se enlightenment values per se, but the methods in which you're pursuing, or I, I guess the the particular arguments that you're making seem uh, vacuous and don't right. seem to uh, get into uh, specific problems when they right. otherwise could, uh, such as, um, I guess we would have to hold this one particular one out for another debate, but like security concerns with refugees coming into India Versus... Right, so we're talking about enlightenment values and you know and criticizing India's politics. You're specifically talking about uh, yeah, India, Hinduism, okay. Hinduism. India. So and, you don't um, you, you don't like the way that me and some other people talk about India's policies, and you want to correct me on this, and that's what we are talking about today. Well, not just that, but also uh, Hinduism in general, Hinduism. Uh, especially what seems to be uh, articles espousing a, a complete banal of um, what it was like in ancient India. Right. Um, so let me, before we continue, let me just say two things. First of all, uh, the audio is coming a little bit choppy for me. Uh, so sometimes uh, okay. I might ask you to repeat yourself. However, the recording might not be choppy because Skype is getting the audio from both sides. So if the audience is, uh, is good, if I say, oh, I didn't hear that it was choppy, repeat it, please. Uh, and the audience might listen to this like, what, do you, what is Armin talking about? It's not choppy. Well, because Skype is, has access to both. So even if it's choppy for me, the recording might not end up being choppy. Okay. So that's one thing. So sometimes I might okay. ask you to repeat yourself. The second thing is that you said that you reached out to me to talk to me uh, and I responded. That just I just want to let people know that's not going to happen with most of you guys because I get uh, 300 requests for talking and stuff like that. The reason why I responded to you is because you're a patron of Atheist Republic, right? So if on Patreon, yeah. if you're like, of, of, you know, people that support Atheist Republic, of course, I'm going to make time for people that are supporting us like that. But I, there's no way that I have time for like all the people that message me, right? So, yeah. So just want um, and I also want to thank you for your support of Atheist Republic. I really appreciate that, and also thank you for your support of of pe of me and my our show that you don't agree with. Like that's very so you like you know uh, well, you don't I agree mean, there, with. Well, I mean, there are pros and cons, Armin. I always look at it as a pros and cons. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just saying that's a very very mature because a lot of people just like they see something they don't like, like I'm done. Right. And you're like, yeah. no, I have disagreements with these people, but I still support what they do. So I, I'm that's the level of maturity that most people don't have. So I really appreciate your support, even with the disagreements that you have with us. You continue to support us. So very grateful. Thank you for that. <laughs> OK, so let's get into it. So what is some of the examples of some of the things that we say um, on Atheist well, Republic? I wanted to begin with... Um... I wanted to begin, like, there were a, a range of topics. I wanted to begin with ancient India. Like, I was going through the, the historic, I was thinking, like, more historic. Um, first, beginning with ancient India, then um, the current dial, the current discourse in U.S. Indology versus the actual history of Islam in India, and then British imperialism. But there were other can we too. focus on the things that we said that is wrong rather than because a lot of those things, I mean, I, I'm assuming you're from India, right? No, no, from the US. No, but you're the, OK, so I'm assuming why are you interested in India and Hinduism? Hmm? Uh, I was why born you... and raised into a Hindu family, Armin. <laughs> OK, so that's what I meant. OK, so you're like okay. uh, you have a background in your are you? 
ex-Hindu or cultural Hindu? What are you? Um, <clears throat> I follow the Samkhya school of Hindu thought, which is uh, basically an atheistic view of the world. All right, so you're obviously going to know... Eh, I can't swear again, which is so bad. I, I, I wish I could swear. A ton you more. Can't swear? On, no, I can't because YouTube is like F you every time I swear. And it's like, <laughs> guess what? We, we already deprioritize all your videos. Now that you swore, we're going to deprioritize it even more. So I like, so I can't swear. I thought swear. it was just demonetizing. Now they're deprioritizing too? No, I, de demonetize, of course. Like we have demonetized, of course. Not all our videos yeah. are demonetized. Not a single one of our right. videos is monetized, right? So that we right. completely give up on and we don't even care about that anymore. What we care right. about now is the fact that we can't grow because they, they just, it's not that just that they demonetize, they also deprioritize every our videos mm -hmm. because of the content that we cover and they deprioritize us extra if we swear so i can't swear um but okay so so i'm just saying if your level of knowledge is astronomically higher of hinduism and the history of india and all of that right so i mean if we go over all that history and all that this is going to be just me like i can't debate that because you obviously know more than me i'm just going to be like okay uh, that's the history uh, but why don't we just focus on the things that I said that is wrong so I could learn from you and correct us? You know, what I mean? like rather than going through a full on history lesson, be like, Armin, you said this and this is why it's wrong and this is why you should stop saying it. How about that? Mm, well, uh, I guess that would be uh, more specific, but. Um... Uh, it it also had to do with like um, the the groups that you're also part of like ex Muslims of North America. You're um, you're one proud of the yeah. uh, speakers, right, for that. Yes, proud member. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, okay. are you still currently a speaker, or because well, I, I saw you listed on the website, so I'm, I'm yeah, assuming I mean, you're still. Yeah. I'm a speaker when they can when I'm around. I'm yeah. right now in the Philippines, so I can't really be a speaker. <laughs> Right. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So, so um, they don't have all the money to fly me to most of their events is in the U.S. Right? right. So I probably they would invite me more often if I was close by. Okay. So I'll just begin uh, with the questions. I was hoping that you would just read some of the PDFs. Um, if you needed me to verify uh, anything that I'm saying. Because no, I was worried I'm that just gonna, I'm just gonna trust you, and if I'm wrong, if we, if we, if he says, if somebody's, if you say something that is wrong, people could comment, and they'd be like, no, right, Armin, right, that, that was. That's why. Yeah, but that's why I sent you. The, just send me the link to the via email. Just send, me, send me the link, and I'll put it in the description for people that want to say that you're full of BS. I could be like. They could check the link. Links in the description for all the stuff that you're saying. How about that? Uh, okay. okay. Uh, but I also wanted you to like read them. Um, yes. No. Wait. No way. But I'm like, I, I have, I have, I am, I am consuming so much content every day, mm -hmm. and they are like, there is no way the number of books that I'm supposed to that I, is on my list. The number of podcasts that I'm supposed to finish, the number of YouTube videos that I need to finish every day, I'm at the every day. It's like they, it just grows, and I'm trying to catch up, and it just seems like I can't ever. Right, right. But what what I had was excerpts, not like huge books that you need to read. Just specific right. paragraphs. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Just tell me now. Just tell okay, me. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Um, okay, I'll read them if that's all right, and then I'll ask you questions. Is that fine? Okay, okay, okay. But can you like do it uh, fast? <laughs> I'll try. Okay, okay, go. Okay, all right. So uh, when responding to you through comment sections on your Atheist Republic live streams, or when reading your Twitter posts uh, or the Twitter posts by XMNA, I've noticed that you seem to think the position of atheism within Hinduism. And you know, I was directly, you know, in your comments discussions on atheist on atheist republic live streams when uh, mentioning this to you, 
uh, within Hinduism come, you seem to think that it comes from some weird faith-based view, the position of atheism within Hinduism. Also, uh, while not specific to you, I've noticed XMNA seems to have this really bizarre view of what uh, atheism and Hinduism entails. So first, I wanted, uh, I'd wanted i like to just read um, so from... Can I just respond to that uh, really quickly? My understanding, based on talking to... Um, again, my understanding is probably a lot more limited than yours. Uh, but my understanding, based on talking to professors and Hindus, practicing Hindus, ex-Hindus, um, is that, and reading some content on this, again, um, not re reading some books that is not like PhD level books, but like a summary books and stuff like that, um, is that, you know, Hinduism is not one thing, okay? There's a whole bunch of different views. And so the way that the professor explained this to me was that if you look at, for example, Abrahamic religions like a tree, like mm -hmm. you have... Branching a, trees, yeah. Bran yeah. You have a whole bunch of branches coming from the core, right? Mm -hmm. You have like Islam, there's, the, there's a core that is the same, but then there's some details that keeps... Uh, you know, branching off of the core, which are different, you know, uh, w even though they are, they have differences, they still share the core, right? And Christianity mm -hmm. also, there's a whole bunch of different branches in Christianity, but they share a core, right? Uh, Hinduism is not like a tree. They say Hinduism is kind of like a river, uh, and there's a whole bunch of different, you know, streams going in the same, you know, going in different directions, and they could sometimes merge, sometimes they separate. Sometimes they just go do their own thing. Sometimes you don't even know why they're being grouped together because they're so different from each other. And sometimes it just doesn't make sense for them to all be labeled as Hinduism. It just seems just because they're from the same area, they're being labeled and summed up, you know, summed together as something the same. Um, so they, so for, for somebody to say, like, what is the position or philosophy of Hinduism and this is kind of the wrong question because... When you're talking about Hinduism, you're not necessarily talking about one specific thing, so you can't really say what is the position of Hinduism on this thing. Is which, that which professors did you ask? Did you ask like Indology professors in uh, the West? Uh, I forgot the name of the guy. Okay, because um, there has been an Indologist uh, who has written the is book. It, so this is not. I, are you saying this is not accurate? Not really, no. There's okay. even been discussion about how uh, corrupt the modern version of uh, Indology. Okay, which... So let me let me say let me say it in a different way. When I talk to Hindus, right, themselves practicing believing Hindus, yeah. when I ask them what does Hinduism think about this, <laughs> I rarely get the same answer, <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's it kind of confirms. I mean, this. However, I admit that my questioning of Hindus is not a statistically, you know, scientifically collected data. So it's very That's inaccurate of data cultural. collection. What? It'd be more cultural. Religion no, is not scientifically no, collected. Anyway. No, but anyways, but I'm just saying my experience with Hindus is that they don't agree with each other on what Hinduism is, right? So when I ask Muslims. There are many disagreements, and we're as Christians about the religion. There are many disagreements, but there are some core elements within their religion that they all agree, right? So, if I ask Muslims, "Is Muhammad the prophet of God? Is the Quran the direct word of God?" You're really not going to get that much <laughs> diversity of well, opinion. One... When it comes to Christianity, for example, if I say, "Is Jesus?" you know, God, well, actually, yeah, mostly, again, not, nothing is absolute, but you're going to get mostly the same answer, right? But no, no I, I get your point, Armin, I get your point. But uh, my criticism of that would be that the Abrahamic faiths were basically uh, a glorified uh, cult of personality in each of these cases, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Okay. And? Yeah. And um, the philosophical differences with hinduism is because they don't have uh, i mean there are cases of god men of course but all right in so general is, they don't have this what is the core of but, but, do you agree? Cult. but what is the core what are some core elements of hinduism that binds them together 
Um, I would say uh, before um, the conquest of Islam, it was probably the pramanas and debate on truth seeking. No, I mean, okay. So, what are the values and ideas? Like, don't just name them. Like, explain them. Um, okay, so I would like to just read like what it was like in ancient India, so that maybe you could get a better picture. Is, is that fine? Okay. Okay. And and how so do we? This okay, one just, would be... What is the source for this? Hmm? Oh, um, I, I shared it with you on in the email. Uh, it's Will Durant. Okay, Will Durant. Okay, good. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, wait. Sec. Okay. So, uh, can you still see me? Yes, I can see you. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, in the first part, uh, it begins with uh, the end sentence, which I had quoted from uh, chapter 15, where uh, Durant begins, Indeed, as scholarship unearths some of the less respectable figures in Indian philosophy before Buddha, a picture takes form in which, along with saints meditating on Brahman, we find a variety of persons who despised all priests, doubted all gods, and bore without trepidation the name Gnostics, naysayers, nihilists. Sangaya, the agnostic, would neither admit nor deny life after death. He questioned the possibility of knowledge and limited philosophy to the pursuit of peace. Uh, Perona Kishyapa uh, refused to accept moral distinctions and taught that the soul is a passive slave to chance. Mm -hmm. Mashkirin Gosala held that fate determines everything, regardless of the merits of men. Uh, his philosophy was also uh, atheistic. Uh, Jita Kasakambalan reduced man to earth, water, fire, and wind, and said, fools and wise alike on the dissolution of the body are cut off, annihilated, and after death they are not. The author of the Ramayan uh, draws a typical skeptic in Jabili, who ridicules Rama for rejecting a kingdom in order to keep a vow. Mm. That's from Will Durant, uh, chapter 15, uh, so, on the Buddha, the heretics. So these are a bunch of uh, people with atheistic views in India back in ancient India. What year? Back or, uh, approximately around 600 BCE. Okay. So the first reported instance of uh, atheists. And why presumably. do you consider that Hinduism? Okay, I mean, I'm so not saying it's not. I'm be... just saying, because, for example, like, again, I'm not saying anything. I'm just asking, right? Yeah. Um, I know, for example, in um, under Abbasite, for example, the dynasty, the, the Islamic empire, right? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of scientists and thinkers that had anti-religious views right. that lived in the Islamic world, right? Mm -hmm. However, I don't, just because they lived in the Islamic world, I don't consider their views to be Islamic, right? right. So my, what I'm saying is, why do you consider these views within India at that time to be part of Hinduism? Uh, they were greatly accepted by the public. It wasn't a case of so discrimination. Were these so were these uh, people. So were these, mm, the people that I'm mentioning as well, were right. also very accepted. Were they allowed to voice their views publicly? Yes. Without being executed? Yeah. Really? In Baghdad, yeah. In Baghdad, but not uh, around... Like, how, how, how limited were their ability? It seems like not very limited. Really? Okay. Yeah. And they were considered Muslim? Well, take, no. I, I would no. argue not. <laughs> I mean, okay. if you, I would argue they had atheistic views, and therefore they mm -hmm. were not technically Muslim. They had, they, they, some of them even have poetry against the Quran. Right. Right. But, but I'm just saying, just because time, they were not just, considered, hmm? were in d during their time, were they considered Muslim? Um, I, I mean. I, I don't have any evidence for this, but I would assume not. Okay. Uh, it's kind of the complete opposite with ancient India. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so they... the second part, um, it's a bit lengthier. 
Okay, so so what is the cat? What is the I'm um, here? What are the standards of you accepting something as Hinduism? That's what I'm trying to say. Like you're, I uh, I understand that there are people with atheistic views in India. I mean, even if if I knew nothing about history of India, and you right. just came to me and you're like, hey, throughout the long history of India, right, for thousands of years, if I if you had to guess. That were there some very influential people with atheistic views, without knowing anything about the India, would you would you guess that there were people like this or not people like this? I would guess, of course, there were. Probably there were. In fact, if you take any land and look at their history and ask me, do you think throughout their history they had some influential people with atheistic views? Do you think what are the chances of that that this was part of their history? My answer would be the chances are very high, so it's nothing. Unusual. But did they create any cultural revolutions for their time? Yeah, I mean, usually Regarding these are you. usually people that have atheistic views are free thinkers, right, and right, but did right. they? But did they change any of the culture during their time? Right. Yeah, like Ibn Sina, for example, uh, did he had some anti-religious views, and then. Ghazali came and ruined all that. Um, there are many people. In, like um, Khayyam um, did that in Iran. He was considered one of the greatest thinkers of his time. And he had you very... Omar, anti- uh, the, the one who wrote the Rubiat, right? Yes. Rubiat. Yeah. He had some very, very anti-Islamic, anti-religious views. And he wrote poetry about it. And he was famous. Yeah, I read some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> I mean, so he was very influential. He's like he's he's considered like a hero of Iran's histories. Uh, he's considered one of the greatest thinkers of the Middle East. So yeah, did he course, come from an Islamic background or a Zoroastrian background? Islamic, Islamic background. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's hard to imagine how that could not happen. Like right. atheistic views is not nothing modern, right? I mean, even right. in ancient Greece, we had like philosophers that said, like, "Yeah, we had atheists." And, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's atheism is actually older than the Abrahamic faiths, right. except for maybe Judaism. I'm pretty sure, like, even the cavemen, when they said, "Like, hey, let's <laughs> leave the let's, yeah, even like when the, some of them said, "Like, oh, these people died, let's leave a gift for them so that they could eat in the next world." I'm pretty sure there was one caveman there, like. Yeah, sure. What the hell? He's dead. What you guys are doing? Like, I'm pretty. Okay, <laughs> I'm sure it was always there. Evidence of that. Like, uh, the earliest evidence we have of hunter gatherer societies was that they believed in mother goddesses. Yeah, but so... do you not think there's? Okay, so they they believe in mother god- goddesses. We have evidence of that. Do you? What are the chances of one at least a, a couple of people thinking like? This is stupid. <laughs> like, do you think that's yeah, happen? but they influence the culture. Do they have any cultural impact? Right. I'm just saying that yeah. given how how it, how big of a reoccurring theme this is, I'm assuming right. that they probably had some impact. <laughs> right. Anyways. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, next part. Okay. When Buddha grew to manhood. He found the halls, the streets, the very woods of northern India ringing with philosophical disputation, mostly of an atheistic and materialistic trend. The, light, the later Upanishads and the oldest Buddhist books are full of references to these heretics. A large class of traveling sophists, the Pribjakaya, or wanderers, spent the better part of every year in passing from locality to locality, seeking pupils or antagonists in philosophy. Some of them taught logic as an art of proving anything and earned for themselves the titles of hair splitters or ear w- <laughs> eel wrigglers. Uh, others demonstrated the non-existence of God and the inexpediency of virtue. Large audiences gathered to hear such lectures and debates. Great halls were built to accommodate them. And sometimes princes offered rewards for those who would emerge victorious from these intellectual jousts. It yeah, was an, again, we, we had this... An age- we, we had we had a similar like the most famous example of that when it comes to the, within Islam. Again, I'm not crediting Islam for this. The, my okay, so the House of Wisdom in Baghdad 
was the center of learning philosophy and science in the entire planet when it existed, right? Like Baghdad was the center of learning in the whole freaking world. What years? What years? I don't have these memories. Let me see. House of Wisdom, Baghdad. Um, the House of Wisdom, Baghdad, Abbasid Dynasty. Well, yeah, give me a year. Um, 750, okay, or was private collection created by the Seven. It was created at 754. Uh, and it can, and it was destroyed by probably the Mongols. Yeah, definitely the Mongols in 1258. Huh. So, again, but... So like 754 but, but, to 1258? Yeah. Wow. So, but... And, and, uh, and this was at the time where, you know, a lot of the rest of the planet was focused on religion and the heart of the Islamic world was focused on philosophy and science. And, but the difference is that I don't give credit to Islam for that, right? This was mm -hmm. happening at the heart of the Islamic world. And a lot of Muslims were like, oh, look how, to, how pro-science Islam is. And like, this has nothing to do with Islam. Just because it was happening in the Islamic world, that doesn't mean it's Islamic, okay? The, no, your em your em their empire got rich. And what do rich empires do at some point? Even when you you have so much money, you stop you know you stop caring just about war and you start caring about science, philosophy, poetry, arts, and that stuff, right? Even the Mongols, the the most obsessed people in the planet with destruction, at some point they become powerful enough to start all of a sudden like, hey, maybe we should build some things, right? Um, I mean, again, with Christians, right? Christianity also, after the Islamic world, Christ the Christian world became the center of science and philosophy and knowledge and art and all that. Uh, and that was not because they were Christian. That's because they got very rich and they got a lot of money and they become very wealthy kingdoms. And when you get wealthy, you start caring about these things, right? So, again, when they uh, not, not, to, not to rain on your parade, but doesn't that um, kind of uh de-emphasize democracy in terms of creating that kind of flourishing well what do you mean wealth also creates democracy hmm? uh, a high net worth of average people also creates demo democracy no yeah. look at china uh, no 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 net worth of people individuals so no you can't look at gdp you have to look at gdp per capita and you right. So yeah, if you want to give me a counter example, you have to say Qatar because GDP per capita there is high and democracy is not very good. At it. But on average, GDP per capita, not total GDP of a country, it, it, you know, increases your ability to your negotiate with your government because every individual mm -hmm. becomes more powerful, right? So mm -hmm. my prediction is as China's not just GDP, but GDP per capita goes up, the government will keep getting forced because forced more to become more democratic. And that's hopefully true, right? Uh, it's, especially if you don't have natural resources. If the government's source of income is mostly tax rather than freaking oil from the ground, then the, your people are your, the source of your power. Right. Mm -hmm. So as more people become more rich, democracy flourishes more. So I think democracy and science and all of these good things is also a sort of, uh, it's actually circular, like it's, it's they feed with each other. Right. Uh, democracy and freedom will become bring more wealth. More wealth brings more democracy and freedom. And both of these things feed into science. and Because science is not just good, it's profitable, right? The more science leads to technology, technology is profitable. Mm. But anyways, that's a different okay. discussion. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, so um, I could just ask you questions if you don't want me to just read like through this, um, if you prefer that. Is that fine? No, well, I mean... I yeah, I do, but I want to also do the things that you prefer. So sorry if I'm being picky. I should be more willing to do it the way you like. 
because this is your okay, time. I'll, I'll just read the bottom half, which I felt were the core uh, was the core point. Okay, so out of the aphorisms of Brispati, who was the uh, Charvak um, founder, uh, allegedly, uh, to the best of our, uh, to the best of the evidence collected, uh, came the whole school of Hindu materialists named after one of them, Charvakas. They laughed at the notion that the Vedas were divinely revealed truth. Truth, they argued, can never be known except through the senses. Even reason is not to be trusted for every inference depends for its validity, not only upon accurate observation and correct reasoning, but also upon the assumption that the future will behave like the past. And so see, this, okay. as Hume would, uh, was to say, there can never be certainty. Uh, sorry, uh, did you want me to stop for a moment? Or no, 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 no. no. Sorry, I thought I thought you were finished. I, I... No, no. Okay, uh, I'll let you know when I'm finished. Okay, what is not perceived by the senses, said the Charvaka, uh, does not exist. Therefore, the soul is a delusion, and Atman is humbug. We do not observe in experience or history any interposition of supernatural forces in the world. All phenomena are natural. Only simpletons trace them to demons or gods. Matter is the only reality. The body is a combination of atoms. The mind is merely matter thinking. The body, not the soul, feels, sees, hears, thinks. Quote, who has seen the soul existing in a state separate from the body? Unquote. There is no immortality, no rebirth. Religion is an aberration, a disease, or a chickenary. <laughs> The hypothesis of a god is useless for explaining or understanding the world. Men think religion necessary only because, being accustomed to it, they feel a sense of loss and an uncomfortable void when the growth of knowledge destroys this faith. Morality, too, is natural. It is a social convention and convenience, not a divine command. Nature is indifferent to good and bad, virtue and vice, and lets and lets the sun shine indiscriminately upon knaves and saints. If nature has any ethical quality at all, it is that of transcendent, uh, transcendent, immor transcendent immorality. There is no need to control instinct and passion, for these are the instructions of, uh, of nature to men. Virtue is a mistake. The purpose of, living, of life is living, and the only wisdom is happiness. This revolutionary philosophy of the Charvaks put an end to the age of the Vedas and the Upanishads. It weakened the hold of the Brahmins on the minds of India and left in Hindu society a vacuum which almost compelled the growth of a new religion. But the materialists had done their work so thoroughly that both of the new religions which arose to replace the old Vedic faith were anomalous, though it may sound, atheistic religions, devotions without a god. Both belonged to the Gnostic or nihilistic movement, and both were, were originated not by the Brahmin priests, but by members of the Kshatriya, a warrior caste. <clears throat> In a reaction against... Wait, 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 I have to write because it's going for a while and I have a lot of points to make, so I have to write these down. Hold on, just one second. Okay. Uh, because you got, it's not finishing and I might forget what I was about to say. That's fine. Take your time. Just one second. And do think. I have all day. <laughs> do you have all day? <laughs> No. Uh, hold on. So what do you, else you say? Brahmins. I mean, I, I sent you the, the link where you, you can you know just read it from the email. No, no, I, I, sent, so. I don't want to because I just want to be able there to... There for just, you. Read it. No, no, I don't need it. I don't want to go through the text. I just want to be able to talk, respond to what you're saying right now. Okay, go okay. on. Okay. This is very interesting, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I wanted to share it. I knew you'd be interested. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> against uh, sacred ceremonialism and theology. With the coming of Jainism and Buddhism, a new epic began in the history of India. Uh, Will Durant, chapter 15, Buddha, the, her the subsection, the heretics. Um, okay. He's using heretics as a euphemism. They were you know, thoroughly accepted within uh, Northern Indian society. I, I like so, that term. Uh, Wait, does he say that they were accepted? Yeah, they okay. built great halls for debates. These people were well loved and well respected in right. Northern Indian society. Approximately, uh, it's estimated. Who are these to be people among... again? They're, they're, these are my favorite kind of people. Who are they again? Uh, the Charvaks. The Charvaks. And when when was this? 
uh, around, it's approximated to be 600 BCE in India. Wow, that's pretty impressive. BCE. The early history of atheism. A hundred years before even the Greeks. Wow. Credited to... Um, okay. You'd be interested. <laughs> yeah, you know, these are my favorite people. But go on. But again, the difference is I give credit to these people rather than Hinduism. Like, I celebrate yeah, these they things. They considered themselves... Well, some of these people uh, considered themselves as part of the Vedic tradition because it was about truth-seeking. And a lot of the theistic aspects decided to just adopt this atheistic philosophy over the years. Um, so the Charvaks probably influenced the Samkhya, which have a thorough... A critique on how unlikely it is that God even exists um, because it doesn't actually make sense. Why is it? With... Th why is it? Why do you call them theistic then? Hmm? What do you mean? So you're saying they said they they these people these what's their name? Sharvak. They bought some atheistic hmm. views, and then hmm. later they on, they dominated northern India for most. For... Yeah, but some people after they mix their views into their theistic views. Yeah. So, well, so I, uh, you know, so um, if they, did, but that means they believed in gods. No, well, uh, you know how the schools of thought work with the Gnostics and the Ostics, right? The difference between like, that? The Gnostics and the Agnostics, or are you talking about Christian? No, the the Christian and the Gnostic. So, within the Christian tradition? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Um, do you, has. Um, uh, has Kushal Mera ever explained to you the Ostic and Gnostic traditions and how they differ? No, because the term okay. Gnostic for me has two, only two different meanings in two different um, different subjects completely. But I think you're now introducing a third one to me. <laughs> okay, so the Ostics uh, uh, took the view that the Vedas um, are either like an accepted morality or divinely revealed. You know, it's, uh, but the Gnostics say that the Vedas are not, uh, you know, accepted or divinely revealed. Um, but they, wait, let me still... write this in. Ostics, which one? Which one thinks they're divine? Uh, the Ostic, Ostic tradition. Divine. And then the Gnostic tradition says they're not divinely revealed. Okay. Okay. Um... So it kind of gets a bit confusing because the Buddha basically considered himself. Ostic, since he felt he was reverting back to the Vedic tradition when he espoused his uh, theology. Uh, but at, at the same time, the Buddha, because of the Charvak's influence, uh, kept the question of God out of his, uh, basically out of Buddhism. He said, you know, the God question is up to you. So if, okay, so are you going to, when can I start speaking? Like when yeah, you yeah, said you're going to... Go ahead. What was it? okay? So, if the Gnostics said that the sources of these are not divine, what did they think the sources of them were, and why were they good to follow? Sorry, could could you uh, repeat that? So Maybe. the the uh, the uh, the Vedas, right? Vedas, how do yeah, you say Veda. it? Yeah, Vedas, right? The Vedas, they say the source of them is not divine, right? The yeah. Gnostic. So, what is the source? According to the Gnostics, and why are they useful to follow? Why are they? Why should it cons be considered? No, they created an their own philosophies. Um, so they but, said, like, uh, screw the Vedas. Like, here's the, here's some stuff based on reason and logic. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, yeah, these are my people. Okay, <laughs> these are my. <laughs> right? I don't I don't know why are you going and I'm finding atheist philosophers, and just because they're in India, just putting the Hinduism label on them. Like, that's kind of like trickery. This is smuggling in Hinduism, in my opinion. These are just a no. atheistic okay, so materialist does, philosophers okay. of India who I celebrate, who now are my new heroes. Thank you for introducing <laughs> some heroes to me. Um, and, I, and I respect them so much that I'm not going to call them... Hen uh, okay, here's the thing. Here's the tricky thing with the word Hindu, okay? Right. It's okay. just like the word Jew, mm -hmm. okay? So if the word Jew refers to a group of people based on ethnicity and also mm -hmm. refers to 
and that's one meaning of it. Another meaning of it is refers to people with a certain religion, and these are completely different definitions, right? So when right. I say Hindu philosophers, that's like this is how you smuggling religion because these people could be completely atheistic with no religion, but they are Hindu because they're born in India. And they're like, see, these are Hindu thinkers. And now you just shrift the meaning of what the Hindu, what you, what you mean when you say Hindu. And it could be Hinduism as a religion instead of Hindu as these Hindu, Hindi people, right? Uh, living in India. And all of a sudden. Hindu, Hindi is the language. Hindi is the language. <laughs> well, in Persian, we refer to it as Hindi. H everything. Yeah, well, I mean, Hindi borrowed from Persian, so <laughs> that's right. probably why. <laughs> like. Like for example, in Iran, we, we you know what we call watermelon, Hindu no. because it comes oh. from India. Yeah, so everything everything India we call Hindi, okay, in Persian. Okay. So sorry if I'm saying it wrong, right? But Hindu could, means every any any a person from India could be Hindu even if they're not religious, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. So see, so okay. that's how. So that's, I think... But you see how the you see how the trickery works here, like how okay. something uh, that is not here's where I here's, think. No, but no, here's but where you I see my point. Do you see my okay. point, though. No, no, I, I see your point. But here's okay. where I think the confusion lies, because um, in traditional like Hindu theology, the whole point was truth seeking, like, seeking. But truth. if it's but then that's not a theology anymore. That's philosophy. If it's if the only thing you can okay. If no, you're not, that, that... where's the theo then? What? If wait, okay. So this is very interesting because when you say theology. You're using the mm -hmm. word theo. Right. Right? And right. you're saying these are atheist thinkers. Yeah. So how is it a theology if they are atheistic thinkers? Right? These uh, are philosophers. Really... Okay, so I think that these really are just... philosophers, not theo not theologians. Who if they spread don't believe... their atheistic views similar to um, theologies, uh, theologians, I should say. But there is no theo. In their philosophy, yeah. if there's no theo, if there's no theo in their philosophy, how could there be theologians? <laughs> well, it it stems from the fact that it was all about truth seeking. Yeah, okay, like but we... truth seeking, truth seeking doesn't make it a theology. It makes it a philosophy, but not a theology. Right, so but they... we're trying to use Western and... definitions on what was an ancient no, culture. Well, we're using the English language right now. Yeah, so, well, we so, we must, so, I mean, I'm using English words, so we have yes. to agree what words mean. I mean, so here's the thing. If you, you're calling them, oh, they started a new religion. How is this a religion? This is not a religion. They don't believe in anything. So, for, Okay, another professor it said to me that there's two things that make something a religion. Two things that you need. Rituals and belief in the supernatural. These people do not have a belief in supernatural. They're not making a new religion. They're making a philosophy. This okay. is not a religion. There's there's a problem with that then, because then Buddhism is not a religion. Neither is Jainism. No, no it is. Buddhism is. They super. I didn't say God. I say supernatural. Right. You but need Buddha to have did not specify anything supernatural. Yes, the supernatural he, he, was, he, he believes in reincarnation. He believes in karma. Those are all supernatural. Yeah, but that's not imposed within... Let me let me explain. He thinks he was things... a rabbit. Didn't he say that I was a rabbit and then I'm a man? He said that. He believes that. He believes that when you die, you don't really die. He believes in nirvana and all that crap. So these are not supernatural? How is that not supernatural? Right, but... The question of God specifically was I'm not, not talking about God. I'm talking about supernatural. Right. Okay. Like if you want to be a religion, you cannot be a religion if you don't have belief in supernatural. You could be a dogma. Okay, but the... but, okay, but yeah. those are not actually the tenant. Like what you're mentioning may have had some supernatural influences from from like Hindu theology, but they're not actually the tenets of Buddhism. The tenets of Buddhism are the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Paths, none of which has to do with karma uh, or samsara. You know, Buddha, the core within the very... The, I, don't, I don't care what you come, list people come up with as the tenets or whatever. Karma and reincarnation is within the core of Buddhism. It's not. Oh, really? It's not. Can, you can, can be a Buddhist atheist. 
Yeah, yeah, I didn't say I didn't say they have to believe in God. I say they believe in the supernatural. No, no, I know what you mean. But listen, that's not true. What, what you're saying about some, yeah, like that you have to believe in karma. Some, some, it's not true. And like you could even you could even argue that these people could redefine it in materialistic views and still be Buddhist, and that would be fine, even if those were tenets. But they're not. The tenets uh, are the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Paths, and that's it. There are plenty of atheist people who are Buddhist. Again, don't say, I know. I didn't say athe they're not atheists. I know most Buddhists don't believe in God, which makes them atheists. I didn't say they don't right. ha I didn't say Buddhism believes in God. I I didn't right. say they have they within the core of the religion does exist supernatural belief. I didn't say they okay, so they believe in God. Armin, 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 if I if I may interview. Here okay, I'm so... reading the core of the religion. Okay. They have the cycle of death, death and rebirth, nirvana. All of this is in the core of Armin. the schools of thought. Armin. So, what? hello. Armin, I may eject. Armin, okay. Um, the the elder uh, the elder teaching Theravada does not require that. Some Maha Mahayana branches, the the wheel Most. branches, they may require it, but they like. The, as far as core teachings of what the Buddha taught, it's not required. It was never required. I, okay. I don't know. The Mahayana branches uh, right. are like so a fusion whatever of... Whatever Buddha... Okay, so I don't know if what you're saying is accurate or not, but let's assume it's accurate. Then if Buddha... I don't even know if Buddha is, was real, if there's historical evidence. He most probably did exist. Okay, so let's assume it was. Um... If Buddha came and is like, hey, we're just, I don't believe in anything supernatural. He's like, we're just going to go based on logic and reasoning. Oh, great. I'm a fan of Buddha, whoever he was and whatever he said, right? But whatever Buddhism is now is not that, <laughs> okay? It's mostly not that. I'm no, looking at what... the elder teachings, the elder teachings still are that. The Mahayana branch is not that. I don't, I'm not, I, I, okay, whatever the elder teachings are now. What Buddhism mostly is today, okay, and I, whatever, whatever, what you see Buddhism in Thailand, when you go to Cambodia, when you go to Japan, okay, so, yeah, what Thailand. Buddhism, okay. hold on, let me finish. What Buddhism is now is belief in the supernatural, okay? And that does not work, Armin. Armin, that does not work in, in you terms deny of... This. This, is ob this is obviously true. Okay, and here's the thing. Let me, let me give you another example compared to Islam, okay? Let's say a bunch of people come in and say, look, we have a version of Islam mm -hmm. that doesn't believe that the Quran is the direct word of God. That doesn't think Muhammad was actually a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. We don't even believe in God. We don't even believe in the supernatural. Didn't but that actually more... happen? No. There, there, what, wasn't there Islamic rationalists who were just killed off because they believed that? No, you're talking about the Mutazilites? Probably. Yeah, the Mutazilites believed in God. They also used scripture a lot. Mm -hmm. they, their, their disagreement was on whether the Quran was the created word of God or the uncreated word of God. Yeah, they, they do they right. have uh -huh. a little bit more emphasis on logic compared to other people, but they were still had supernatural. The video's cutting out. Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, but I can I'm hear talking you, about but the video was cutting off. Uh, okay, but I'm talking about something that has never happened. Okay, a branch of Islam that says, like, you know what, we're gonna just use logic and reasoning. We don't believe in things without evidence. We, there is no proof that there is a God. We don't know where the Quran came from. Um, Muhammad was probably not the prophet of God. I'm like, okay, great. You guys seem logical. But why do you have to call it Islam? This is not Islam, okay? And I'm going to be like, in fact, you're doing a lot of damage by calling it Islam. And you're like, oh, we're just going to celebrate this book called Quran, even though we don't believe in the things that it says. It's just part of our culture or whatever. Like, stop it. Just stop it. You guys are giving 
uh, uh, legitimacy and authority to a religion that doesn't deserve it. You guys are rational. You guys are using the correct methods at achieving the truth. Great. Stop grouping in yourselves and using the same labels and the, the use the same terminology and symbolism as the, people, hold on, as the people who actually. don't and making it seem like oh they could like now when i say like oh islam is bad islam is evil islam needs to die which all of these are true and every time i say that people are like well what about these guys i like <laughs> right these guys seem to be rational though i like no, but those guys are not Islam. Like, you guys are making my job, like, fighting against Islam difficult. Stop using... Imagine if I, imagine if I say, like, look, I'm a modern-day Nazi, okay? And my Nazism is different from what traditionally defined Nazism. My Nazism accepts all people. We love homosexuals. When we talk about the Aryan race, we're talking about the Aryan within all people. Everybody could tap into their inner <laughs> Aryan. Uh, this is not about black or white. This is about something else. We're completely redefining everything. I'm like, why are you doing that? You guys are, you, you don't have to use the same terminology. Like, you guys are like, okay. oh, I'm just going to use my mind confident, read it in a different way. No, <laughs> don't do that. Like, just like, just get rid of that and come up. Just say those things that are good without giving cup, without providing cover. Okay, okay, for Armin, Armin, oh. Armin. I get. <laughs> okay, I get your point, but um, my counterpoint with that would to that would be, this isn't this just a natural outcome of any civilization with free thought. Yeah, and my reaction, my angry reaction to it is also a part of the natural reaction. Me, um, people yeah, like me mean, are also part okay, of the natural reaction. You know, I understand, but war, on a fundamental okay, level, okay, people on, want to celebrate their culture. War is also them. a natural part of society. Like, you, there's no way that you wouldn't have war and killing and mass genocides and rape and slavery. All of that, if you rewind the human history and no, no, okay. a um, gazillion times and play it over again, you're going to have slavery, okay? Doesn't make that just because it's part of natural part of society, history, that doesn't make it a good thing. Okay, right? all right, but that, that's two different things. I'm talking about something relatively innocuous. Um, now, what you're mentioning is like all, all that rape, slavery, killing, like that's due to supernatural beliefs. If the supernatural beliefs are gone, oh, what's not the issue? Always. A lot of times you're right, but not always. Not always, of course. There are exceptions. But if the supernatural beliefs are gone and people just want to celebrate their culture, what's wrong with that? I didn't say there's anything wrong with people celebrating their culture. Okay, but if someone wants to celebrate Islamic culture without the supernatural aspects, what? what's the that. issue? There's no issue. I do that. Okay. I, I like Islamic art. I like Islamic history. I like Islamic mythology. I hate Islamic history. <laughs> I, I used to hate it. Now I love it uh, because it's like a puzzle that you have to solve. It's very interesting. It's an early Islamic history. If I, I had think uh, me with Hinduism. Hmm? No, no. Okay, I think yeah. me with Hindu history. No, no. I, okay, so I know that Islamic history... Uh, I know Muslims killed more Hindus than any any other race, any other group of people in the entire world, right? Uh, I know, actually, I know, actually, there might uh, there might be one more that they killed more than Hindus, uh, Africans. Do the uh, African slave Hindus, trade? I think they killed more Hindus than Africans. Are you sure? Because the, no, the, sure. how long was the slave trade? trade? I mean, the slave. If you, uh, okay, so the slave trade killed a lot of people, but they. They tried their best to keep their slave alive for their own interest, right? Okay. That was so. Fair when enough. it came to Hindus, uh, they weren't trying to keep any of the Hindus alive. I mean, we right. have Hindu Kush that was named after them Hindu killing. Star, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, but I'm just saying. I know, I know that uh, that the horrors. I mean, a lot of people talk about the Crusades and stuff, and they keep forgetting that okay. the most tra- I, I, I know all that. I, I'm just saying I know all that. But what I was say, getting at is that, you know, for example, if I enjoy Mayan history, okay, yeah. and Mayan mythology, and yeah. Mayan symbolism, yeah. that does not mean that I approve of human sacrifice. Which of is part of, you know, I'm just enjoying the studying it, right? So I think with Islam and Hinduism and Christianity, 
there you could do that. The problem is not the culture. I mean, it is the depends on what you mean by culture. Okay, so culture. I mean, culture has if you culture has two separate complete meanings, and I don't know why they use the same word for both of them. Okay, there should be two different words for these things. If if by culture you mean arts, dance, food, music, poetry, um, you know, fashion. That's one definition of culture, which is great. The more of that, the better. Celebrate the crap out of that and share it with the whole world, and that's fantastic. Wait, wait, wait. Do you, do you count religious celebrations as that too? Like, if there's a a religious party, uh, like Diwali, where they just you know throw around. Yeah, that too. Uh, that too. Without the belief, right? Without the belief. For example, I really like the atheist Jews that say, like, you know what? We don't believe in any of this nonsense, but we like doing the things right. around the holidays they just do it right they like yeah. the belief is the problem the the tra traditions the rituals and the traditions are not the problem the belief is the problem in fact i love the people that do the rituals without the belief because they're showing to the rest of the world you don't have to have the crappy belief to be able to take advantage Armin, of the Armin, I, I wanted to jump in on this point uh that okay when uh when xm actually said that um, they oppose Hindu atheists who do just this. They did make that tweet saying like Hindu atheists what who is, like rituals and so forth way, but are because, atheists. Okay, first of all, let me tell me what the tweet exactly said. And so before you do that though, I'm a, just because I'm a, mem I'm a proud member of XMNA, that doesn't mean that they're like my religious. I follow them like a religion, and I support every goddamn tweet that they make. I don't even. No, support, I understand. I don't I'm even just support. You I'm, know, I, fo I founded Atheist Republic, and sometimes I see some tweets and posts on the Atheist Republic page. And I'm like, holy crap, who approved that, <laughs> right? So I don't even approve. I don't even approve a lot of stuff that is posted by Atheist Republic, which I founded. Let alone XMNA, which I am a proud member of. You know what right, I mean? I understand. So, right. But I don't know uh, what. I'm, they, I'm not saying they like, said anything wrong because I don't know what they said, right? But but Hindu the, the the term Hindu atheist, a, a lot of the problem, a lot of the issues that we have with some of these so-called Hindu atheists is not the celebration of tradition. I would celebrate the tradition. I just came back from Thailand. I went into a whole bunch of temples. I freaking loved it. I even took part in like some of these monks were chanting, and me and my wife just sat there and joined them, right? It was beautiful. I loved it. Mm -hmm. It was so relaxing. It was amazing. Okay, it felt like we're tapping well, into that's some... what XMNA is. Uh, no, let, but let me let me make my point. I just don't like the beliefs, right? And I will call out their beliefs and the misogyny mm -hmm. that in. By the way, I'm gonna make a video of the misogyny that I experienced in Buddhism in Thailand. But anyways, so the. No, but another thing, so, but I was saying there's two types of, the, two things when people say culture, there's two different things, right? The first one is the art, the tradition, the rituals. That is, there's no harm in that. And people, in fact, if more atheists take part in that, you could prove to the religions that like the monopoly over these rituals will take it away from them. Because a lot of these religions like, oh, if you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to lose this community and all this beautiful stuff. I'm like, no. I could just walk inside your church and look at all the beautiful art, and I'm an atheist. So there, <laughs> checkmate, Christians. So that's there's that. Um, the other culture that I have a problem with that shouldn't be shared, shouldn't be celebrated, shouldn't be, um, you know, promoted, shouldn't be um, excused is the part of when people say culture and they're talking about values, right? So if you say, oh, Islamic culture, and they're looking at Arabic calligraphy, I'm like, yeah, that's great, share that more, that's beautiful. But they're like, oh, Islamic culture, what is that? Like, oh, wife beating, or <laughs> what, right? <laughs> that is Islamic culture. Uh, I'm like, yeah, no, I don't like, I'm not gonna, you can't be like, oh, stop, stop beating your wife. I'm like, what's the reason you're monetized? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but if they say this is our culture, I'm gonna say, well, f your culture, right? Because if no, you're talking no, about yeah. if you talk about when people use culture, then that other meaning of culture is about values, about it's about way of life. If you're talking about that, it, then there's superior culture and there's inferior culture, okay? And inferior cultures need to be destroyed. They need to be eradicated. They need to be like they need to die, right? So we're t we're dealing with two definitions. So when it comes to Hinduism. If you're talking about the temples, the art, the mythology, the stories, 
I yet yeah, that's amazing. We we need we need more of that in the world, and those are okay. beautiful, right? Um, okay. But if you talk, but what a lot of these Hindu atheists sometimes do is that some of them are like, oh, that's just my tradition, my culture. I love it. I celebrate it. Like, yeah, power to you. But if you make excuses for the, any of the supernatural beliefs, any of the not faith-based beliefs, any of any claim without evidence, even the claims that are true, but you're supporting it because it's part of Hinduism and not because you saw an evidence, even if they're true. So this is a problem with religion. Sometimes they are even saying some things that are true, but it's actually more dangerous when they're saying something true and people believe it. Because they're saying something that is true, and because it's true, believing it becomes beneficial, but people believing it, not because they check the evidence, people are believing it is because it's part of their culture and part of their tradition, and it works for them. We're like, oh, see, my methodology is working, but your methodology of accepting claims just because it's part of your tradition is a horrible way of coming up with conclusions. And just because you got the right, the right conclusion sometimes it's going to help promote a really flawed methodology, right? So don't accept no, it. I, I, right. Okay, so that these are points of agreement between us, right, okay. but I do not find this to be true insofar as a lot of these other ex-Muslims, because it seems to me like if Hindu atheists are like so, like Kushal Mera, like praying to temples and so forth because they enjoy it or because they enjoy the literature or the art, it's like you're telling us that, oh no, this is wrong too. You should just be Western atheist. Why do you have to be Hindu atheist? Why do you need the Hindu? I monarchy? never say Western atheist. When, is but that a Christian? What are you, Western atheist? No, Western atheist is just not lack of belief in God. Right, Atheism exactly. Atheism yeah. predates Western philo philosophers. It's nothing to do with Western East. You don't believe in God, you're an atheist. That's all it is. How is right. that Western? The West has no monopoly over atheism. It has nothing okay. to do with West. So right? then, okay, so then you have no issue with the term Hindu atheist. Well, it depends on what you mean. I, I don't have an issue with it the same way I don't have a problem with Jewish atheists because when they say mm -hmm. Jewish atheists, um, they're not they just talking... their culture. Well, no, Jew means, again, Jew has three different meanings, mm -hmm. and now they're introducing a fourth one. It's very right. interesting because also. Hindu has also three different meanings, and now they're introducing a fourth one. Uh, so it means a religion. It could be referring mm -hmm. to a religion, a culture, or an ethnicity. And now they're smuggling in a new definition, which is a nationality. Okay? And I think, like, in India, this uh, you see the same thing happening as well, right? But if you, when you say I'm an atheist Jew, if mm -hmm. by Jew you mean ethnic, then that's not a contradiction. If by Jew you mean cultural Jew, then that's not a contradiction. In fact, that's great, okay? Uh, but if you by Jew you mean obvious, if you mean a religion, then that's obviously a contradiction, okay? Mm -hmm. So w with Hindu, again, if you mean cultural Hindu or ethnically Hindu, then atheist Hindu, there is no contradiction in that. But mm -hmm. if you still believe in any of the, if any, if you believe in the existence of any of the Hindu gods, then obviously Hindu atheists will become a contradiction. No, well, that's not what I mean by uh, Hindu atheist or you know the Aztec branch of. I... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I would. Uh, hang on a minute. Okay. So m my problem would be, I guess, more the other ex-Muslims then who. Um, who counter by saying, you know, like the traditions, culture, or the rituals, uh, that's what the tweet mentioned, like the rituals of Hinduism, like, oh, these atheists, they enjoy the rituals, and that's wrong. Yeah, like, no, it's silly I, I, to have do been, that. I have been very much outspoken against that view myself. I keep telling people I, I enjoy, I am one of the most anti-Islamic people that I know, and I enjoy Islamic Okay. Also, um, if if we're going to say Hindu is a geographic identity, then I mean technically, any ex-Muslim from India or Pakistan or even Bangladesh could be called a Hindu atheist, which doesn't really make sense. It it would have to be you know the theology and culture, not uh, the the genetic identity. Um. Yeah, but I mean, 
so it would be more of a nationality rather than ethnicity because Pakistanis have the same. I understand that Pakistanis and Indians are very uh, uh, diverse in their ethnicity, but they they have the same diversity. So Pakistanis and Indians are technically they're very, the same people. They're the same people, right? Yeah. So if if Indians are ethnically Hindu, then technically Pakistanis are ethnically Hindu yeah, as well. Yeah. So and most people don't use it like that. So I guess it would be more of a nationality. I mean, but hopefully not, because that would be I mean, they're trying to define it as a nationality, which would be very unfair to the non Hindu citizens of India, right? Okay. Uh, Does um, that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay, no, but so you're right. I... But you're right. Compared to Judaism, Hindu would be less. The word Hindu would be less based on geography, or ethnicity today. But mm-hmm. it would have. But if you go back in time, it would have been an accurate description of both geography and ethnicity. Uh, there was a period where uh, after Alexander the Great's conquest. A lot of Greeks settled into India and intermingled and basically fused the theologies. It's probably what influenced Mahayana Buddhism, like the Buddhism that you see as supernatural and so forth. Uh, it was probably a fusion, it's speculated by archaeologists, between Greco Roman uh, polytheism and Buddhism. Yeah, but still, the mix was kind of all over the place. So that whole area of Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh of today, you could still see that, okay, this is some. Overall, the same same Hindu people here, like same ethnicity of people. Yeah, yeah, okay. So now it's more complicated because you have Pakistan, and they're the same people ethnically, but they're not. Nobody they refers not? to them. It, nobody refers to them as Hindu, but back then it would have been more easier to refer to these people as ethnically Hindu as well. Okay. So um, I just want to ask you a few of the questions that I had uh, written down. Um, I'm not sure what your particular stance on nationalism and you got cut out nationalism wait let's wait it out it's getting it's getting cut let's just wait it out for a few seconds can you hear me now can you hear me now hello wow this is very true it's not my internet my internet is very very good it's your internet hello all right. Well, I wait for him. Okay. To come. Okay. Oh. I. Uh, yeah. I. What? Oh shoot. All right. I okay. All good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you and a few other ex-Muslim uh, activists regard Hindu nationalism and other forms of nationalism as toxic or unproductive. But why shouldn't nationalism be a healthy or expected outgrowth of any country that's rising in economic power, especially since the West has done this when it rose in prominence and dominated the world? Why are we making the West like as a role model to be followed? Because of the the product of Western universalism pushed out uh, to the globe for like 500 years. But I don't do that, so I don't know if that's fair to ask me as as if, like, why are we not, the West is the, like, I criticize the West all the time, right? So right. if you say, like, oh, well, let's have national, let's do this because the West did this, I'm like, well, I mean, I, I don't support everything the West does, so I don't know why that would be even a comparison. But, okay, so depends, to answer your question, whether nationalism is good or bad, depends on what you mean by nationalism, because... Right. Um, I support the idea of having nations, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like I think um, having borders and nations and having each region of people find the people to rule over them and govern them and be representative of people for that area, um, that has been shown to be the most effective way of running the world, right? So... Mm-hmm. If you if you say if that's enough to call somebody a nationalist to support the idea of having nations, that would make me a nationalist, right? Well, mm-hmm. but what doesn't make me a nationalist is to root for a group of people that I happen to be born closer to over other people, 
that I was happen to be born farther away from. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's all I'm saying. That if yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um I wanted to ask a question regarding Western universalism. Um, how is the belief in Western universalism, not just a form of Western narcissism, if you're ignoring or erasing positive history of rationality and skepticism from cultures that aren't from the West or saying like, it's not part of, um, their religious tradition, even though it may have been, or is part of their religious tradition, uh, to have, uh, those features. Wait, like, give me an example. Like, uh, the Charvox. No, but I do that uh, with the Western philosophers as well for example i see the enlightenment values does not belong to the west and i also remind people that the only reason why enlightenment values became popular at a certain time in the west was in western european countries was because of many reasons but part of them was because the arabs during the golden age of the arabs uh, mm -hmm. decided to translate a whole bunch of philosophers Mm -hmm. And if they didn't do that, the West wouldn't be introduced to those ideas, um, right? So it, I, yeah. I always keep emphasizing that this might have been a historical accident that these values became popular at that time. And I say okay. that, yep, at, the, yeah, at, that I, specific, I, at that specific place, at that specific time. It right. could have, if it wasn't for somebody like Ghazali and people like him, the age of enlightenment could have as easily been happening in the Islamic world it, it looked for a while that was going to happen it could have become the end of religious influence in the Middle East uh, but then things took a turn for the worse but it could have as easily be somewhere else and so the values that these enlightenment philosophers popularized if you look at everywhere every other country that is not in the West that adapted them they became much better places to live Immediately, you know what I mean? Like if you just compare North Korea with South Korea, they're the same people, same ethnicity, same history, same geographical location, but with different values. And look at the, the difference between them is like night and day. Look at Japan, right? Look at the difference between China and Hong Kong, right? So you can see that ideas that work, they just work anywhere. It, it has nothing to do with, with whether it's the West or not. Now, you do you include being a secular republic in in uh, with those values? Yeah, a secular, yeah. Okay. Um, I want to ask a question. And this that, is uh, why. This is why I the secular activists in India are also my heroes, right? The secular uh, activists in India, I've noticed, seem to just denigrate Hindu culture as uh, barbaric and ignore the atheistic aspects completely. Well, or you, can't least, you can't talk about a whole bunch of activists as if they all believe the same thing. You know, like, I've read like, their um, blogs. All of them? I take the time to read their blogs. And uh, I've noticed that they, they don't seem to appreciate uh, well, but, like, but, the rationalist okay, but, aspect okay, but, no, okay, so rationalist aspects. I don't appreciate the rationalist aspects of any tradition that tries to give credit to something that doesn't deserve credit, right? So, for example, if some, if you show me some Muslim philosophers that said some great things, I celebrate mm -hmm. those people, but just because they happen to be Muslim, and all of a sudden Islam is trying to take credit for it, I'm like, you don't get to do that, right? You know what I mean? If you show me some Christian philosophers, that even though they were Christian, they said some, or Christian scientists, right? That they, have, they do great science. Right. And then you're like, okay, let's celebrate this person for the great science that he gave humanity. I'm like, okay, but if you, I, I'm, I'm right with you on that. But all of a sudden, if you try to give Christianity credit for what this, Christian scientists have been, is, you know, discovered, I do not support that, right? So I don't support the fact that some, you know, some within the Christian world or within the Islamic world, of course they're going to be rationalists and scientists and great thinkers. Their religion does not deserve credit for that. I will, I will be with them if they try to take the credit away from the religion and just give the credit to the individuals. I will support that. I'm consistent with that. It's not just with Hinduism that I do this. I do this with Islam and Christianity and Judaism as well. Judaism! How many how many scientists, how many Jewish scientists do we have? Jewish culture, yeah. Right. Yeah. So many. 
do you think there's everything, anything in the Torah that is deserving of credit for the the book that is so anti? I think we need to be careful there because um, the Torah does encourage this idea of truth seeking uh, within the Jewish community. I mean, come on, which book, which religious book has not mentioned be truth seekers? That's so easy to do. The, the, but then when you read more okay, into but, it, uh, these well, other religious books like Christianity and Islam ban this idea of atheism and ban this idea of not believing in God, whereas Judaism and Hinduism don't do that. And that's a major Ju- Judaism. Judaism, this in the commandment: don't worship any other gods other than me. Uh, well, apparently, while that is true, there's nothing that's preventing a Jewish. Uh, person, and you know, as in terms of the religion, from being an atheist within the actual theology. You're talking about within the practice or within the scripture, because within the scripture, you're you know you're supposed you are supposed to worship only one God, the uh, Yahweh. Well, it says to worship God, no other gods besides Yahweh, but it doesn't actually say don't worship Yahweh. Apparently, from what I've read into uh, Jewish theology, I found that really interesting because that's what there's Jewish that's what began the whole Jewish atheist trend I mean you're giving credit to a book not... for truth seeking that no, told you I'm, that, I'm... that says like talking snakes Wait, you're getting cut sorry what that's... No, sorry. Okay, so that's what they describe as the reason. I'm not saying I'm not giving an opinion on that. I'm just I'm just all right. But I'm just saying this is okay. But let's just look at what what was happening, right? So people like Judaism has truth seeking verses. Christianity has truth seeking. Truth seeking. The Quran has truth seeking verses in there, but none of these books can be. The Quran and Christianity are not about truth seeking. I know that's what I'm. That's my point. Just because you say like, "Hey, truth is great. We should seek the truth." But then, okay, what's the truth? Well, like, whatever I tell you, that's what the truth is, God damn it. Don't go that. So that's, but that, that is not... <laughs> I know. It might I'm be just... part of the rabbinical aspects of Judaism. It's not necessarily part of this trend for towards atheism, nor was it ever a, technically a trend within Hinduism because you could just make your own, like, subgroup All right. so and here's the thing. go from there. One of the most hot, highest percentage of atheism or secularism within a group of people is the Jewish people, right? They have the highest percentage of atheists and secularists than any other group of people, okay? Uh, If if I'm wrong, correct me in the the comment section, okay? But does that's a great example. So not only they have the, the highest number of scientists and the smartest people, even their average people, on average, are more atheistic and secular than other people. Does that mean Judaism is an atheistic religion? Definitely not, right? Definitely not. So, no. right, so but in the same way, if you go and show me a whole bunch of Hindus uh, that were rationalists, great thinkers, uh, to me, the Hindu religion, if it could be labeled as a religion, is something that believes in the fact that these gods, ex- like any idea that believes these gods are real, the Vedas are divine, reincarnation is real, karma is a thing, the caste system makes sense. Those are requirements. Yeah, but if you so, well, take all of that out, mm-hmm. it's not a religion. Uh, I think we would have two different definitions of uh, religion then. If, um, because what is your definition of religion? Um, I would say um, belief in, I guess, an ancient cultural tradition, uh, which has been passed down and you know slowly changed over the years. So that would mean any old any old tradition you would call it religion. Well, right, but uh, under your definition, technically, um, Buddhism, the the Theravada system, would not be a religion. It would or be Jainism. Because, okay, you know it would be. They have supernatural beliefs. Both of them have. The Theravada system doesn't require supernatural beliefs, Armin. If you can find a part of okay, if you can find again a part of this subculture of these people 
that believe that is not representative of the entire theme of things, but they're like a small group that are like, oh, we don't believe in all this. They're not religious, God damn it. Like, okay, like for example, there's a, there, there's a rabbi, okay? Mm-hmm. There's a this guy, a rabbi, right? And he mm-hmm. does, he, he has following, he goes to the synagogue, he does all the traditions, and if you ask him, he, he's an atheist. You ask him, do you mm-hmm. think God is real? He's like, no. And like you think any of these stories in this in the Torah is true? And he's like, no, they're obviously fiction. Well, do you consider this guy religious? Um, it would really depend on what he sees himself as. Well, I don't. Okay, <laughs> if I if if I don't see a like a rabbi that just goes through the motions, just loves his culture, loves his like you know tradition and stuff, but if you ask him. If he believes in any of these stories or if he believes in God and he says no, to me, that's not a religious person. Okay, so. And if you, think to... that, if you define that as religious, then your religion, your umbrella of religion covers a whole bunch of things that most people don't use the word religion the way that you do. Yeah. Okay. Well, then we're talking about different. If we okay, then if it's a semantic issue, then we agree on many things, right? For example, if you say, yeah. if you say, uh, I don't know, like all um, all cats are evil, I'm like, what are you talking about? Not all cats are evil. Like, well, and then I say, well, I def- I I my definition of cats is people who are evil. Well, okay, I guess then yeah, if based on your definition, all cats are evil. You know what I mean? Like you just. You can't. So if I say like, "Oh, every religion is bad," okay, and you mm-hmm. say, "No, every religion is not bad," uh, like, well, m- my definition of religion is things that also uh, have supernatural belief in it, and your definition of religion includes things that could be completely based on evidence and rationality and do not have necessarily supernatural belief in it. Then me, this agreement between you and me is just a semantic disagreement because yeah, it's just we both, yeah. because we both agree that the thing that makes me you know the thing that makes me believe that religions are evil and harmful is the supernatural part so and okay. if you if you I mean, disagree with that as I well mean, I, then we agree right okay so I, I think we're just circling around semantics at this point then um i wanted to just uh, continue on because there's yeah, other stuff i wanted to cover Okay. Yeah, okay. So um, I want to ask this last question of the first section because you ended up ask, uh, answering five and six uh, during your <laughs> uh, discussion. So okay, <laughs> thanks. Um, My rent. So, okay. Are right. yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say that because I didn't want to like offend your feelings, but yeah. Oh, you can't. Um, it's it, you can try. That you're not going to be able to. But go on, sir. Okay. So are ex Muslims from South Asia, particularly Pakistan, Bangladesh, or Northern India, not simply going back to their ancestral beliefs by becoming atheists? I don't know. Are they? I'm asking your opinion on that. What is there? How far back are we going? I don't know. Six hundred BCE to to the Charvax. <laughs> well, I guess if you're right, if 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 it was, but if their Charvax were okay, are you claiming that the Charvax at the, the okay at that time, six hundred BCE, are you saying that almost like the vast majority of people there believed had atheistic views? Uh, I think that's undetermined. But they did dominate the culture of northern India at that time. Well, I uh, mean, just... yeah, I guess if you're right, which I don't know if you're right or not, yeah, I guess they are. And so, as going by uh, what Will Durant has, um, I mean, you could say from the sources, I mean, technically, everybody is going back to their ancestral beliefs if they go to atheistic views because there was a time <laughs> in the world that religion was not a real thing, right. There was a time within our history of our species that God was not yet invented. So, the, if you no want to figure, supernatural, if, like um, no, no, okay, if you go to hunter. Then, if, no, okay, we'll go before that then. All right. At some okay, point, there was humans on the planet, and there was no okay, supernatural. Norman, um, one of the problems is pattern recognition. We they might have had supernatural beliefs uh, based on symbolism, like instantaneously from uh, how the human mind does pattern recognition. Okay, pattern recognition, but that doesn't make it necessarily supernatural. 
false false pattern recognition does not okay like let's say for example i look at my wife and i think like every morning um if i get off of this side of the bed she's more nice to me than if i get off of the other side of the bed and i'm wrong okay, and i'm like so... i'm like i see like i'm doing pattern recognition i'm seeing pattern that does not exist okay and that's wrong doesn't mean doesn't make my belief supernatural right not all pattern rec not all false pattern recognition are supernatural beliefs so i agree with you humans whatever humans were i they probably always had some false pattern recognition right but at some point if you go back in time there was no supernatural belief so technically every human... we need evidence for that armin we need evidence for that well you don't you don't have okay sure Okay. I'm saying I'm saying this is the most likely scenario. I'm not saying this is my theory and I'm going to put like my thesis on this and this is I'm standing by this 100%. I'm just saying this is no, not no, a, I, this I, is not even I mean, a theory. This we, is a this is a, a hypo No, you don't need evidence right. for a hypothesis. You need evidence for for something to be called a theory. This is my hypothesis. My hypothesis is that if you go back in time, no, I, I wanted to move on if possible. <laughs> No, but you were trying to make a point that you're trying. See, you're trying to make uh, ancient India so something very grand, and I understand your emotional attachment to it, right? And you're like, oh, ex therefore, no. you, I'm guessing. Correct me if I'm wrong. And you're like, well, ex-Muslims in Pakistan, they're going back. They're becoming back to the traditional ancestors. I mean. What's the point? No, no, no. Okay, so my problem with ex-Muslims from Pakistan, from the, the attitude, I, I guess, ex-Muslim Pakistanis in the West, more, more so, not like ex-Muslim Pakistanis in Pakistan, because they're probably fearing for their lives. I don't have uh, any problem with them. Uh, my problem with them, with the Western ones, is that they treat um, ancient Indian society as if it was just superstitious barbarism. I've seen the articles, they quote a lot of news media which is just purporting historical inaccuracies but honestly, and i wanted to okay, that's so why i wanted to share i don't these... know i can't really defend things that i haven't read okay, okay. so if okay. you i can't be like I, I only represent my own views i don't represent right, other right. people's views right? no i understand so. yeah but i felt like that was a persistent problem that was not being addressed. And every time I would go into their comment sections, it, it felt like I was just being ignored. Or if I comment on their Twitters, um, I, I spent like seven months like presenting the, the information, the stuff I emailed to you about you know, Will Durant, uh, the history of so, India, so and the, so here's forth. The thing, though. I come, okay, so I was born in Iran, right? right. And my experience is that people that ha have some emotional attachments to their country they romanticize their history a lot more than what it actually happened right that, and, mm -hmm. every that's every country you know, yeah every country right so i when when hindus come and say so many great things about how amazing india was i am uh, my skepticism meter just goes through the roof yeah, you know that's what I mean? another reason why i wanted to share this is uh, so you could just the, read them yeah. and the thing There's is and it, another thing is that what you can what if people come and say like look how great ancient iran was right mm -hmm. and they come give you evidence it was yeah no well it was and it wasn't because no it, was great. it kicked rome's ass yeah, I don't see that as great. When you say kicked Rome's ass, to me, you could see that as glorious. To me, okay, that, that, hold I on, believe that... it was Cosro too, right? Cosro too. He went sunbathing in Rome while his armies were kicking Roman armies' asses. Yeah, but that that was not... one of the best moments but of foreign really... okay. policy that I've ever seen an emperor do. Okay, but you know, read an emperor has done. You know that in, the whole conquering involves raping, murdering, killing of civilians, taking wealth of people. Right. So when they say, oh, look how great the Persian Empire was and look how many battles they won. Uh, I'm like, yeah, why is that a good thing? <laughs> that, that is not a good thing. 
Okay, <laughs> that is, every single battle that People they won. The about Rome. Look at what Rome did to Carthage. Hmm? Rome burned Carthage to the ground and salted the land. Yeah, but so why is why are they so proud of that? Like winning is not always a good thing. Okay. So I'm not proud of that. I don't even see. I don't even see that as part of my history. That's not, you know, um, people are like oh, the great Persian, em- glorious Persian Empire. Like, okay, I mean, I enjoy history as much as many other people, but I'm not rooting for one side over another just because we ever was born there, right? right. Uh, you know, it doesn't like the the war part was horrible. I mean, now looking at it from a safe distance, it's interesting to learn about it. But let's yeah. not pretend it was something great. It was horrific. War is always horrific, right? Especially yeah. compared to people, war. We see like we look at war right now. We're like, oh my god, it's so bad. It was worse then. People didn't used to die with bullets That's within true, seconds. Yeah. They were, they were you now they bleeding out for hours before they died. They they were crucifying people left and right. Wait, wait. wait. World War One and World War Two was actually worse, and that's from modern civilization. No, it so... wasn't. Actually, it wasn't. If you look at um, the total number of people that died from violence, it it decreased even if you take World War One and World War Two into account. Even if you take, look at the stats. Look at the stats. Okay. You mean from Steven Pinker or someone else? Any of stats. No, okay. I looked at Stephen P- Stephen Pinker's stats on when when he publicizes them in lectures. I've I've looked at them when he's presented okay, them in lectures. World War Two get... was the worst. No, well, okay, yeah, per per okay. If you look at the if, if you look at one year or two yeah. years, yes, World War Two was the worst. But if you look at century by century by century, every century was better than the next one. Okay. Um... Every century. Okay, go check. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but last time I checked, even with World War One and World War Two, every century was better than the century before it when it comes to violence. Okay. Anyways, that was not my are point. We, are we counting diseases on that? No, I'm talking violence. Okay, okay? not diseases. No, but if you, but include diseases, we had the freaking Black Death in Europe. You can't compete with that if you want to include diseases. But anyways, uh, Armin, let, let me just ask you a quick no, question. But let me, but my, my, this is not even my point. My point is, what was we even saying? Oh, talking about oh, uh, the Persian the war. Uh, yeah. the, no, talking about like glorifying uh, uh, the past because you love your country. I'm just saying, I'm not. If you really love your history and if you want to show that your your past was great, you don't have to lie, because every country has a whole bunch of examples. And providing sources, I wanted to show. I don't know. Yeah, but that's why I'm, I was presenting the sources. I wanted to show to you that you know that what I'm you're, saying you're is not a lie. My, my, you're missing my point. My point is that you don't have to lie to be able to go and find great examples of your country's past. There, right. There is not a single country that doesn't have a a crap ton of great examples of horrible existence. things, yeah, human rights abuses and so no, forth. No, both, yeah. both, great things and horrible. Mm-hmm. Things. Every okay. country has a giant pile of amazing accomplishments of their country. That if you just read those, you can think that oh my god, this is the best okay, country okay. in the Armin, world. Armin, no, no, I, I get you. Can I, can I finish? No, I'm going to finish my point. And every country also, every country also has a giant pile of horrible examples of their history that if you just read those, you're going to be like, oh, my God, this is the worst country in the world. Right. So you don't have to if you want to make a country look great or if you want to make a country look horrible, you don't have to lie. You could actually find real history. But if you just focus on the good things, the country is going to look amazing. And if you just look at the horrible things. The country is going to look very bad. Okay. Yeah, but uh, doesn't that ignore the percentages or the level of violence? Sometimes, if you just turn it into, into like a vague blot of history. What do you mean? I mean, no, yeah, like, I'm, okay. So if you do want to, if you do do percentages and then compare it to other countries, then you're doing something that most people are not doing. That would be more accurate. Okay. Okay. But that's not what people are doing. When, I, when people want to celebrate Iran's past or they want to mm-hmm. destroy Iran's past, 
They don't go like, okay, these are the percentage of the things that we accomplish compared to other countries. Uh, no, they're like, oh, look at all the great things we did. Just look at all the great things. And if you want to make the country look at bad, they're like, oh, look at the horrible things that this country did. They don't do the level of analysis that you just suggested. I haven't seen even people that, for example, defend India. They don't do that. They're like, look at the list of accomplishments. I'm like, yeah, great. Nobody denied that. And the people that hate India, they're like, oh, look at the horrible things India did. Well, every country has both of those things. Yeah, they would okay. be more. Yeah, but you, yeah, yeah, you're right. If, if you want to just to be country, clear, my country is the United States. <laughs> just no. I'm, well, I'm talking about the Indians that defend. Yeah, yeah. the ancient Indians. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, you okay. So I wanted. To... You don't consider yourself uh, Indian in any way. I do consider myself Indian. Okay. All right, I'm then. an Indian American, though. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Then. Okay. I was born and raised in the U.S., Armin. Yeah, but you're still Indian. Yes, That's still what Indian. I'm referring to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so it's not inaccurate if I call you Indian. And so I don't know. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk about this next um, section. Okay, so U.S. Indology um, has been, you mentioned, um, uh, you know, here and uh, before, I think a few days ago, uh, the Islamist of India and I killed it. Well, uh, you You're getting chubby, chubby, getting chubby. Can you repeat been... that? Okay, so you mentioned you know, the Islamic conquest, which killed a million uh, in India. Mm. Okay, you heard that? Okay, I mentioned um, the Islamic conquest that killed eighty million in it, India. Yeah, yeah, here yeah. and uh, before in another video, and. Um, I found that U.S. Indology, contemporary U.S. Indology, mm. has been not that this ever happened. And um, well, I never knew that. And are you yeah. saying they're wrong or are they right? Huh? No, they they aren't even. Looking at you're getting the, cut, yeah, the, you're getting choppy again. Can you're, just you're getting you're getting choppy. Okay. Can you tell? They, okay, they are not. Looking at the evidence, they're just writing around it and basically whitewashing or denying that it ever happened. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I, and what 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 do you point? What is your point? Because I assume that it did happen okay, until so, now. I didn't know yeah, anybody so, yes, denied this. Okay. So, in your opinion, is genocidal is genocide denial of a historically substantiated genocide an act of denying the human rights of victims of genocide? What? Well, the act of denying the victims of genocide. Well, no, not necessarily, but it's really bad. I mean, it's so horrific to deny a genocide. It's not denying the rights of the victims of genocide because they're they're dead. So I don't know how you could deny the rights of people who are the human not... rights. If human rights have any value, is no, that... I, it's it's really bad for human rights to deny any genocide, and I'm very much against it. So yeah, it's the it's a very it's a huge blow to the cause of human rights. We have to remember genocides. We have to um, focus on genocide. We have to study genocides. Uh, and one of the worst things, like all history, is important, but the worst parts of a history are more important than anything else because we have to learn from them and how to avoid repeating them again. So denying any genocide is very very costly and should be avoided at all costs including the armenian genocide the genocide of the hindus by muslims the holocaust um all yeah yeah, every, yeah. so okay yeah. so are modern u.s indologists denying the historic genocides of islam for the sake of being politically correct in order to represent all religions or as equal in your opinion I don't know, but that would be my first guess. Okay. So you think they're denying, you would agree that they might be denying it just to present all religions as like equally peaceful? I'm, well, not, not just all religions, but I do think that Islam enjoys a certain level of privilege in mm -hmm. Western, in a lot of Western societies, and a lot of people try to defend it. And I'm, I don't know if this is the case here. But my first guess would be if this is what you if what you're saying is true, my first guess, and I, again, it's just a guess, would be that this is what's happening. Yes. Okay. 
so I I provided you the sources in the emails if you want you know, if you wanted to check. Um, Can you give me send me some links I, I was, uh, so when I upload the to, video, uh, read them uh, if you yeah, but, had wanted to. Okay, but it doesn't really. Okay, so the thing is that I couldn't I don't know I couldn't find the time, but my conclusion would be the same either way, because if it's okay. true, if what you're okay. saying is true, then yeah, I condemn it. And these people, and in fact, if what you're saying is true, um, then another point of hypocrisy is the fact that this would never be tolerated if the same people were doing this for the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And how many people died in the Holocaust? Uh, according to Haritz's article, 5.1 million. Uh, but there was also, you know, others besides Jewish people. So we're probably yeah. around the million average. That's I think it was important. nine million if you add the gypsies and the homosexuals yeah, okay. and okay. the handicaps and stuff, so and the handicaps okay. and everyone else, right? So yeah. nine mil, you have nine million, I think, uh, and the and anybody that denies that Holocaust will be removed from Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, never be platform anywhere ever again. Right. But these people are doing this for the genocide of eighty million. And mm -hmm. nobody, 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 gives, nobody, They're no, nobody cares. Yeah, it's trying agree to be that. pushed as historic fact, even though it's not. So yeah, if that's what is happening, then that's not only they are wrong, but the people that are not reacting to it is also a huge point of hypocrisy. So I thank you for bringing this to my attention. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, does Western academia, particularly modern Indology, lose credibility, and thus? Uh, our ability to trust what they say for you know denying this genocide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean they have. I mean, lose. It's not a binary thing, though, right? So it's not like you you had credibility. You had one hundred percent percent credibility yesterday, and you have zero credibility today. It's not like that. But yeah, they have le these. I mean, again, I try you not to try to do guilt by association and just generalize the whole academia together. These people specifically, I, uh, I meant specifically modern Indology. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this next part uh, has but to again, do with again, even British... modern Indu modern what Indology are they Indu just like, Yeah, but are they just like don't they have mul like is multiple different groups like is Maybe these people... They're pretty uniform uh, at this moment because very few people even go into Indology from the West. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. There is a book called Nay Science where they're criticizing Indology as an anti-Semitic uh, German scholarship kind of program that pushed anti-Semitic and uh, Protestant, like extremist Protestant views into Hinduism to try and change what the meanings were and basically fabricate what Hinduism actually is. Um, this is from uh, a modern uh, Indology sc scholar. Uh, uh, I think his name is Vishwa uh, Aluz. Sorry, I okay. don't. Just to be clear, I'm just I'm just going by ifs, right? So right now I'm not assuming, yeah. I don't know if this is. Um, and also the tech, the, even though I know in the email that you sent me, I can see Vishwa like in, in the email that you sent me, you sent me a, a lot, like a lot of text. Uh, mm -hmm. the, but the thing is that even if I read them, f mm -hmm. that wouldn't ver for me. Like I'm not going to be able to like okay, so I got some text from you, so it's true. I will actually have to go look at, you know, this. You know, if I, I, I gave the citations, I know, I, I know, but I know, but then I like if I really wanted to verify things, then I would actually have to go look at the citation. Yeah. And then I always have checked the credibility of the site of the person that in that citation. So this would be like, so just because like somebody gives you a citation and some text, that doesn't mean like, okay, I trust it 100%. Like, no, I'm no, not I saying, know. I'm not saying it's like, this would be an entire two week project uh, right. of its own. If I wanted to right. verify these things. So I just want to let the audience know that I'm going based on, the assumption that what you're saying is true, and if what you're saying is true, these my conclusions are based on that, right? So, okay. yeah. Okay, well, uh, that's why I provided the citations. Will Durant is again, uh, but, but again, the cite, yeah, Will Durant is, you know, 
I, 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 I obviously Vildoran is better than most people. Again, even though he's not perfect, um, but again, I would. There's three steps, right? First, I would have to read all the text that you sent me. Second, I yeah. would have to actually go check if the citation is even true. Right? Sometimes, like you get somebody cited something, but then if you actually go read it within the, the context, you see that they were saying something else or it wasn't cited accurately. And then also sometimes you don't recognize the citation. Maybe it's a good source. It's not a good source. I'm not saying it's a, these are wrong. I'm just saying this is not just like um, because a lot of times people read a text and just because there's a citation there, they're like, okay, this must be true because I just read there was a citation at the bottom of the text, right? But it doesn't work like that, no. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that would mean encouraging you to read longer paragraphs, which is what you did not want to do. So. Yeah. I, yeah, because I'm limited in time, so I'm not yeah. saying I'm not saying that I'm not saying that this is not true. I'm just saying I'm not right now. The all the content that I'm consuming it limits me to con consume to do a research project on this. But that's yeah. why I'm encouraging you to send me some links. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to verify what you're saying is true. They could just link, check in the description and do their own research. So can you, is like, because I, because these texts that you can send me, right. I can't just link to them. Um, in the, if you send me some links, I could provide those as resources, right? Hello? You, you got cut. The next you're issue you're pertaining, you're... pertaining to the legacy of British journalism. In it. Okay, so I wanted to concisely articulate my point of view on the next issue pertaining to British imperialism in India. Okay. Um, and uh, it's mainly just going to be me uh, speaking uh, is this the length, last uh, regarding... Is this the last point? Because we've been going on for two hours now. Sorry? Is this the last point? Yeah. Uh, I guess it's me be, for the most part, me speaking on what I find so contentious regarding the methods in which you've gone with um, talking about British imperialism in India. And I'd like your opinion on that um, after okay. I'm done. Is that mm -hmm. okay with you? Okay, okay. So okay. 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 So I'll begin uh, now. Okay, so what I... First, I'd like to ask for your best guess on the death toll of British policies in India. And in the context, we're obviously including the people of Pakistan and Bangladesh too, and all religious communities, Sikh, Jain, Christian, Jew, Zoroastrian, Muslim, and Hindu. Um, I don't know the number, but I do know Churchill once denied food to, uh, during, you know, during the war, that was a huge... Yeah. The Bengal. How many people died because of Churchill's decision not to send food to India? Uh, it's estimated to be between one to three million. But that was right. the last one in a long series of events. Right. So I'm going to... Okay, so this is this could be completely wrong, okay? But I'm going to guess that it was less than the Muslims. <laughs> uh, well, that would be... That seems to be true, but it that would depend on the if you count diseases, uh, so and not just starvation. Uh, explain. So how does that work? Okay. Um, well, do you want me to just tell you the number, the estimated number? Yeah, because I have no idea. I'm just guessing that it was less than the Muslims. Uh, it's estimated to be between forty to sixty million. Right. So the Muslims killed eighty million. Yeah, and the British are the cause of uh, at maximum Star sixty million. Yeah. All right, well, so the si sixty million. Okay, so when you come when you count sixty million, I think the Muslim number would be even higher than eighty million if you include starvation and disease, right? Because the eighty uh, million, uh, the eighty million of the Muslim is just direct violent attack, isn't it? The eighty million. Hello. And in, uh, enslaving them and having them walk through like mountains and they die in the in right. the Kush mountains. So, so yeah. the eighty million does not include anything surrounding starvation or disease. Yeah, it doesn't. So, the, so the Muslims are even if you include that, the Muslims are much higher. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right. So at least I got that right. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> what? Okay. We should be. Like, why are we laughing? This is really bad. They were talking about the death of millions of people. We're not laughing. <laughs> we're this laughing is... at our, our own humor. <laughs> yeah, we're we're okay, we're so... laughing at we're laughing at my ignorance, not at, ourselves. Yeah, we're, we're laughing, laughing at, at my ourselves. ignorance of of how proud I am just to get something so basic. We're not laughing at the killing and death <laughs> of people. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, let, we, we are not. Yeah. Okay. Like my own family suffer. Well, my uncle in law suffered uh, from that, so I would not laugh. Um, okay. So I just wanted to give my general impression on how I've perceived your behavior regarding this particular issue uh, in you know Twitter, Facebook, and so forth, and your general comments on Atheist Republic. Okay. And I want you to be prepared for this because I respect you and I respect much of your work. I respect you know your uh, uh, work toward human rights, so this is going to be a hard critique, just possible for the sake of honesty. Uh, it's going to be lengthy, so please just uh, okay. be prepared. I might interrupt you if your audio gets choppy and remind ask you to repeat something. Oh yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. Okay, so it seems to me that you've been portraying this issue as far right Hindutva groups whining about the past, and it seems like you cherry pick the stupidest comments by right-wing Hindus or people you perceive to be right-wing Hindus on Twitter in order to make your arguments look better than they are. Also, you and Ali Rizvi seem to uh, purposefully ignore the most measured and thoughtful critiques on your positions on Hindus, although this might be uh, due to the volume of Twitter comments or Facebook comments that you both uh, deal with. So, yeah, just letting that. Um, but I, I say this having spent seven months giving you and Ali Rizvi my own measured critiques throughout uh, 2019. And I never really got any responses uh, from either of you. But again, the volume of tweets that you may have uh, gone through might have had to do with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in general, the attitude of other ex-Muslims towards Hindus seems to be the same. Any objection to what ex-Muslims say or uh, any support for ex-Muslims is labeled as far-right Hindutva boogeymen with no interest in any meaningful dialogue. You don't seem to be aware that it was the Indian National Congress Party's Sash, uh, Shashi Tharoor who wrote the book End of Darkness, where the claims, uh, the policies that, uh, that the British uh, d conducted uh, led to the death of what Tharoor writes to be 35 million uh, for most Indians. He's counting starvation, uh, to the best of my knowledge, not diseases. Uh, regarding what the British did to India is not particular to one party. It's fairly bipartisan, and to the best of my knowledge, most people in India are, you know, uh, harsh critics what British policy to India, um, not just because of Pakistan, but how they ruled India and the starvation campaigns that they caused. Uh, Tharoor spoke at Oxford Union regarding the British owing reparations and the Modi government uh, had or in full support promoting the video of Tharoor's speech online. So this is pretty bipartisan by uh, domestic Indian politics. Uh, what is it? That, sorry, you got choppy. What is it that by, is bipartisan? Um, the support for the position that British imperialism uh, led to suffering for the Indian people. When did I ever deny? When did I? When did I ever deny that? Uh, you. Okay, so this is this continues on to the next point. I'm not saying that you deny it. I'm saying that you're saying it doesn't matter. When did I say that? I've seen you on several live streams, Armin, saying like it doesn't matter, and you seem to just laugh it off. What the hell? Okay, may, maybe what you're referring to is what. First of all, I would never say. I would never say the kill, the death of starvation of people doesn't matter. That doesn't sound like me at all. I would never say no, that. I'm not what? saying that you said that. I'm saying that you, you seem to just 
whenever someone brings up British imperialism and the wrongdoing done to India, you seem to just laugh it off and say it doesn't matter repeatedly in a lot of your live streams. No. Okay. Like so that's how it is... comes off to okay. me and I'm sure for other people. This is these are the things that I say that may, might have given you that impression, right? If you blame if somebody blames the people today for the crimes of the people in back in history, that is something that I do not support. Okay? I support remembering history and learning from it, but I do not support but the British deny what they did. Hmm? The British either deny what they did or say that it was like a civilizing mission and if, that the cost was worth it. Well, Those okay, are the two so, attitudes. No, okay. So it's oh. not that black and white, okay? There's not that black and white. There, obviously, the British did some great things when they had an empire and they did some horrible things, okay? Uh, just like most other empires. Uh, mm -hmm. I would arguably other empires did more harm than the British Empire. Okay, for example, the Islamic Empire, I argue, is responsible for more harm than the British Empire. I mm -hmm. say that. When I say that, that does not mean I'm denying the harms caused by the British Empire. I'm not denying that. Okay, if I right. ever say that, I also say the British Empire is responsible for a lot of good in the world. If I say that the British Empire is responsible for a lot of good in the, in the world, that does not deny the harm that they caused in the world. Okay, I also say that um, you cannot be guilty for the crimes of your ancestors. You cannot blame the Germans today for Nazi Germany. You cannot okay, but, blame but the if British... But deny the crimes or say it doesn't matter in their modern politics... I never said that, that I say I'm consistent with this even, for example, in, in Iran, mm -hmm. there's a lot of hatred for Arabs, a lot right. of hatred for Arabs, because the Arabs invaded Iran 1400 mm -hmm. years ago, and mm -hmm. they, top, they destroyed the glorious Persian Empire that every, a lot of Iranians are so yeah. proud of, right? Yeah. They and they entire... Yeah, and they hate the Arabs today for a crime that com was committed 1400 years ago. <laughs> if I say that does not make any sense, why would you blame the Arabs today for a crime that was committed 1400 years ago? That does not that um, does not I mean understand. that does not mean I'm saying that that didn't matter. Do you know what I mean? Uh, okay. Well, it it seemed to me like you were conveying that it doesn't matter for Indians who suffered from a British imperialism. I, and I include I, Pakistan and Bangladeshi people to that. I get, too. I get, okay, so I get blamed from the other side as well because a lot of times they were like, you know, in the in the World War II, uh, this is what I say all the time, Hitler wasn't, like, it wasn't the battle between good and evil. Yeah, Hitler was evil, but a lot of people think like Churchill mm -hmm. was the hero, but I'm like, no, Churchill was also evil, right? Because of what he did in India. For example, I say that all the time, and people attack me for that because they're like, oh, Armin is on the Nazi side because he's saying Churchill is evil. Like, no, <laughs> what? I didn't say that, okay? So when you think like, I, to you, I sound like I'm defending the British Empire, to some other people, when I say that, to them it seems like I'm defending the Nazis, and I'm like, you know, thinking like the Nazi crimes was not that big of a deal because I'm comp I'm saying Churchill was also evil, right? What he did was evil, right? So it just it just people's perception of what you're saying is depending on what you're comparing something to, right? I always have to remind people, for example, if I say X is worse than Y, that is not an endorsement of Y. Y could also be freaking horrific, but X could also be worse than Y. Do you know what I mean? So if I constantly mm -hmm. say X is worse than Y, X is worse than Y, X is worse than Y, and you hear that many times, you think like, oh, Armin is a fan of Y, even though I might not be a fan of Y. Do you know what I mean? Okay, but Armin, Armin when you say like some good came out of the British Empire, most of that good was due to like indigenous Indian people, like reformers like Ram Mohan Roy and the Bengali Renaissance for making changes um, to what we see in modern India today as far as culture, like the banning of Sati. The British, was... Empire, the British Empire and 
it was responsible for the end of the slave trade. The British Empire uh, is responsible that, that's for debatable. that. You, okay, that's slavery still right. exists. Okay, the end of the slave trade in many many places. How about that? Good. Um, the British Empire it, it's not normal anymore. At least it used to be normal. Oh, wait, the, wait, wait. Actually, wait, Armin, Armin. Okay. When, Hold on, let me say make my point. The no, British no, but, uh, Empire is responsible for the freaking steam engine. Okay, mm -hmm. and the internet. Two of the things that are probably that changed every every goddamn country in the world is a better place because okay, of these Armin. two things, right? The British Empire the, is the responsible. Hold on, bill, let, me, let, me, uh, let, me, let me make a few points, okay? The British Empire is responsible for discovering a whole bunch of vaccines. And each single one of them has saved more lives than the entire number of people that they killed in all of their history. Okay. Again, I'm not excusing just because you come up with a vaccine, that doesn't mean, oh, okay, so the genocides are okay. Right. I'm like, oh, you killed a whole bunch of people, 60 million Hindus, but that's okay because you discovered vaccines. 60 that you million Hindus, not Hindus. Sorry. 60 Indian. million Hindus. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, so you kill 60, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, oh, you killed 60 million Indians, but that's fine because you also discovered the vaccine and you saved more people. I'm not saying that. Obviously, these are different people. This is why the British Empire, like when I, forget even an empire, a country that is not even an empire. You cannot be like, oh, is this country good or bad? Well, which policy, which people? Right? You cannot refer to something so giant and so diverse as good or evil. You cannot even do that with one in most individuals. Right? You, can, you ask me, like, oh, Armin, what do you think about this person? Well, like, okay, what do I think about what aspect of them? Their personality, their views? Or like, oh, their views. Okay, which one of their views? I don't have a general view. Uh, um, view of all their views because some of their views are right. good some of them if i can't do that with one goddamn individual how could i do that with a country how could i do that with an entire empire right okay. so it's more complex it's not that black and white okay but to be clear and like for audiences because i i do think you gave a really negative impression to a lot of indians uh or and pakistanis and bangladeshis as well maybe 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 the reason why and i, I will criticize myself for that is maybe because I come from a background of dealing with Muslims mm -hmm. who blame everything and anything on either the West or Israel, right? Okay. So sometimes I make fun, like if they lost their keys, they're going to be like, oh, like the imperialist West lost my keys, right? <laughs> now, I'm not, <laughs> actually, that used to be a joke. That used to be a joke until... Somebody, this mullah, this religious guy in Iran, lost his shoe, and he actually bl blamed the Zionist. Okay, this is not. This actually really happened. Okay, he lost his shoe while he was praying, and he somehow tied this to the Zionist. Okay, so this was a joke until it became real. So, I come from a background of people exaggerating the mm -hmm. faults of the imperialist West. Okay. So if if you take that into consideration, maybe the reason why I push back against that more is because I'm used to people exaggerating that. Okay. But just so we're clear, you condemn what the British did to 60 million people in India, Bangladesh, Pakistan. Of course! I kill, okay. I, I condemn the killing of all innocent people by whoever. Okay, here's okay. the thing. I, I condemn the British Empire killings of Indians. I condemn the Mong Mongols killing of civilians. I condemn the Arab uh, killings of uh, civilians. I condemn United States killings of civilians. I condemn the Persian Empire's killing of civilians. I condemn the any killing of civilians, even if it's not genocide, okay? Even okay. if it's just one goddamn person. If the British Empire, if the British Empire did everything that they did was good, they mm -hmm. all they did was spreading enlightenment values, science for everyone, human rights for everybody, but just one time, one time in their history, they decided to kill one civilian person. Just one, not genocide, just one civilian. I would okay. condemn that. One okay. civilian. All right. Okay. 
glad we made that clear because I think uh, some viewers uh, and the impression I was getting myself it was like more negative than. Uh, All right, then that's probably my fault. Okay, that's probably my okay. fault. Okay, so another thing is uh, that it seems like um, a lot of ex-Muslims seem to just ignore uh, agency or any like positive cultural aspects uh, with um, Dharmic culture in general. Like I remember watching uh, Harris Sultan and Elie Rizvi uh, talk from their Patreon uh, video on um, secular jihadists, where they mentioned that. Uh, when they were talking about the citizenship bill in India, they were surprised by the lack of global Islamic terrorists from India, and neither of them seemed to consider the possibility of Dharmic cultural teachings and norms playing a factor. So it seems like I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know about this, so I can't comment. I mean, okay. they're both Pakistanis. They're talking about something that you and them know more about than I do. So I don't know okay. if. I mean, if they, if I have no idea if it was influential or not, and. So, yeah, maybe. So I can't come. Okay. I may ignore it and stuff. Okay, so you, you mentioned earlier, you know, having a secular republic um, is great for, you know, Western values. And, um, Not Western values. I didn't say Western values. I actually, here's the interesting thing. Right. I didn't say Western values. You said enlightenment. And value, I, I'm, and I'm actually, it's very interesting because you think like I'm so pro-Western and anti-Eastern stuff. In fact, why am I so sensitive about not calling it Western values and calling it Enlightenment values? Because I don't want this to be like a Western thing. I want okay. this, you know, so, so I'm actually yeah. the opposite of the, of the perception that you have of me. That, that's why I call these values Enlightenment values, because they don't belong to the West. They belong, okay. they're not, not only they don't belong to the West, they're not even invented by the West. They predate the Enlightenment thinkers of Western Europe, the only thing that happened in Western Europe is that they became popularized and they became a little bit more detailed. Oh, wait, okay? where do they predate? Huh? Where do they predate? Because I mean, most predate of... in India and in, you know, some of these values you could see even um, in ancient Iran, in India, in, I mean, I guess ancient Greece as well, but that's technically the West. So... But it predates what I'm saying. It predates, it predates those 1800 Enlightenment thinkers, right? So you can okay. see some elements of it in ancient Greece. You can see some elements of it in ancient Persia. You can see, apparently, a lot of it in ancient India, right? So it predates them. It was not invented by okay. them. Just to be clear, like the the atheist aspects, you know, it was mostly men in India. Women, they had better rights than most other ancient societies at the time. But it it's nothing right. like feminism we have today i, I want to no no i'm not saying it was perfect or it was i mean yeah even even the enlightenment thinkers of western europe in the 1800s they were even not as good as when it comes to you know the right how what our understanding is right. today i'm just saying they didn't come up they did they, they, it wasn't like the whole idea of equality of rights between humans was like something that was did not even occur to anybody until the, these these European philosophers said that, like the whole you know the whole idea of uh, accountable government. Yeah, they popularized it. They 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 talked about it in a lot more detail and they refined their ideas probably better than a lot of people before them. But it was not invented by them. There were other people that mentioned these a long long time a long time ago before them, right? Okay. So. So, so it wasn't it wasn't invented by them. And it, was, values. It, it wasn't invited invented by them, and it shouldn't belong to the West just because it got popularized in the West. These are values that has proven to work for every nation that adopts them. Uh, and we have data that works. We're not just and even okay. And the fact is that a lot of these Western uh, philosophers of the 1800s, they um, their reasoning for why these values work. Sometimes it was not very well. Sometimes a lot of it was a little bit faith-based, right? So yeah. a lot of times they were like, oh, these are rights ordained by God and stuff like that. But So to me, it's, it's like a mutation that even if you get something randomly right, it might work. Now we are at a better place in time to look at these values and choose the values because we have the record of them working rather than mm -hmm. the arguments of people like, 
somebody philosopher comes like, oh, these are natural rights, something in the fabric of the universe or some crap like that. No, yeah. we have data now. We look at the yeah. stuff that we we accept these values that work because we see what works and what doesn't work based on evidence. Okay, so I wanted to do a for the last part a modern comparison between uh, India, modern India, and modern Great Britain uh, in terms of adopt, uh, adopting Enlightenment values. I wanted to point out that India is a secular republic with a physical constitution. And uh, Great Britain has never officially been a democracy since it is legally a constitutional monarchy with a oral constitution. So its constitution isn't even a physical document. And that's why document. what people do in practice is more important what they yeah. do. On oh, no, we, uh, we can get into practice. Okay, so in India, both upper and lower parliaments are elected by the people, except for a few positions appointed by the prime minister, which have to do with arts, social services, and you know so forth. While Britain's parliament has the House of Lords, which is not elected, has the Church of England and hereditary membership uh, in its seats, and which can be appointed by the British monarch or an independent and, to the best of my knowledge, unelected council that approves its own membership. What are we trying to prove here right now? Well, so it seems to me, right, that uh, India's secular public government is following uh, Enlightenment values more closely than the constitutional monarchy of the United Kingdom has ever done in its entire history. And the only reason we think otherwise is because uh, Western culture constantly makes excuses for itself, for the ideals it claims to uphold, but doesn't when probed with further scrutiny. Well, I mean, maybe in that specific thing, yes, and I'm not going to deny it. I mean, I have to look into it a little bit more, but overall... UK social monarchy all right, to this so, day. No, but, okay, but the monarchy in the United Kingdom is just symbolic. They, they can declare have... war. Yeah, but they don't. It's like nothing. They did in the Falcons, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Okay, so but it's not. It's mostly symbolic, right? And another thing is that what what works in a society. I feel like that. Excuse. I'm not these, going like, to defend it. Okay, symbolic. here's the thing. Okay, I, I, I'm not defending it. It should not be right. there. Okay, monarch, monarchy should die. Okay, and <laughs> the fact that the United Kingdom, which is the one of the most popular places for enlightenment values still has a monarch is ridiculous. Okay, right. I just want to say that, but I also want to say that enlightenment values, um, I mean, it's great. Okay, so let me just get this out of the way. Props to that. That's better than Britain. Great. <laughs> uh, overall, though, enlightenment values work best if it's adopted. I mean, there's other enlightenment values as well, like equality between right. sexes. Again, I'm not talking about equal outcomes. I'm talking about equal opportunities, right? So right. equality between the sexes, minority rights, um, freedom of speech, um, government accountability, okay. due, due, due process, right? So having a good judicial system that people get to defend themselves very effectively, oh, not, have, not having blasphemy I... laws. So all of that... Uh, so it's not just one or two things. There's a whole bunch of things. Um, and also, it's not just about the level uh, of how much the government adopts those, but also how much these values are accepted and respected uh, among the people, right, as well, right? right? And I would argue that uh, Britain is going the wrong way when it comes to these values. Because of Brexit? Right? No, because of PC culture. <laughs> like, like a lot of people in Great Britain seem to agree that it's okay to arrest somebody because they're saying something they consider Islamophobic. Yeah, there, there were uh, arrests for uh, someone insulting a Muslim guest who, because these two uh, hotelers said that uh, Muhammad was a warlord. This happened in yeah. 2009. Yeah, I mean, what a lot of people self-censor. They seem to be like... I mean, it doesn't seem good. Like, United Kingdom seems to, I don't know what's happening there. Maybe a lot of people are exaggerating or not exaggerating. But overall, it's really hard to analyze how bad the situation is, right? Because both sides exaggerate. So it's really hard to get a, a reliable understanding of what's happening. Um, but, but overall... One more question. This no, is not I'm pertaining to Great Britain or India. Well, it's kind of okay. technically... Yeah, but I'm just saying that I'm sure there are many things that you could point to in India that is better than Great Britain and vice versa. Right. Right. But my point was like the West, like 
extols these values, says it's global values, but then doesn't really live up to them. Yeah, and and we should call them out for it. Like, for okay, so you think you found a hard example? I can I give you a better example? Sure. Okay, so you think okay? Oh wow, Great Britain. They don't have. They have monarchy sometimes influencing their government. Like, oh, what great horrible. What about the fact that the so-called supporters of human rights are funding Saudi Arabia's bombing <laughs> of civilians? Yeah, Isn't true. That, wouldn't yeah. that be a better example? <laughs> like, so, uh, like, yeah, I mean, these are supposed to be people like are on the side of human rights, and they're like Saudi Arabia is like they, they know it. They, they know, know it. Yes, they they know. know that uh, like we're selling weapons to this country that is going to use it as a way to to bomb ports to use starvation against civilians and they know it and they're still selling not only they're selling Imagine. weapons to Saudi Arabia they're doing the world's largest weapons deal in history to Saudi Arabia to do that Imagine right Imagine the US is violating its constitution by doing this Yeah No Um do you think you could expand that on that a little Well apparently if I if I read this accurately Mm -hmm. The Constitution of the United States doesn't allow you to sell weapons to a country if you know that it's going to be used against civilians. Oh, okay. No. Right. And both so, Obama and Trump did this. Did this, yeah. yeah. Both, and Trump increased it, right? Yeah. yeah. And Germany did this. And United Kingdom did this. Trump also increased it to Bahrain, which was... Uh, uh, you get to... Uh, who were working together for a peaceful protest, right. uh, even jailing a month, a, I think a 12 month old baby and her mother uh, for so, ripping a picture of the monarchy. So, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been uh, attacking Western countries for this specific thing ever since it started, right? So, if you think I'm like a, of a champion of Western countries, I'm not. Um, and you know, I mean, these are countries that are supposed to be supporting human rights, and they are responsible for supporting the greatest humanitarian crisis of our lifetime. The situation right. in Yemen right now is the greatest humanitarian crisis of our lifetime, and they are supporting it. So, and I point this out all the time. All right. Okay. So, so I wanted to ask this last question. This might come as a shocker for you. Um, uh, you might know it though, so, so just you know, be prepared. Uh, okay, so let me just ask you this. All right, wait, wait, Which wait, country... wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm prepared. Come. Okay, <laughs> let me just ask you this: Which country, until 2012, had a minority ethnic population unable to sue their rapists or murderers of their families in federal court? India or the United States? Able to sue. I mean, b based on your agenda, I'm assuming it's the United States. No, no, no not, not agenda. My, con uh, I really want to believe in human rights, but I I'm feeling more and more like Machiavellian power dynamics are just. The I don't norm. know. The I'm assuming it's the United States, but I don't know what the example is. What is it? What is it? What happened? Okay, so. I had this paragraph ready for you. So uh, while rape crimes in India are largely reported in the Western media, the rape crimes of Native Americans hardly ever receive the same reporting in the Western news media. I recall reading the UN report on India's rape crimes in 2011, which found that the statistics were lower than expected given India's population size. Uh, India's rape crimes have made global headlines in the West, presumably out of compassion for the human rights of Indian women. If that is so, you know, if it's for the human rights, that's great. I approve of that. It means a change in laws, a change in society, you know, uh, a change perhaps in the culture regarding misogyny and whatnot. That's great. Yet no such global headlines ever occurred for the fact that Native American women were unable to sue their rapists in U.S. courts or that state officials in several U.S. states had mm -hmm. the power to relinquish tribal rights of jurisdiction under public law 280. But what but okay, but hold on, hold on. What do you think? Like, do you think like what is the? Do you think like I'm gonna be like okay, one of them is bad and the other one is not bad? Like, what do you like? I mean, what do you? My so point you... is like, West. Okay, if the West is presenting itself as like a champion of human rights, 
but then it's it's more an image than what is reality. I mean, we're talking about the United States here, where until tw- until the Violence Against Women's Act was amended in 2011, 2012, uh, Native American women didn't have the right to sue their rapists. Right. And in 87% so, of the- That is yeah. bad. But, okay, so here's the thing, though. But I do notice, though, that there's a, a lot of Hindus, every time you point at the horrific rape statuses in India, they keep doing whataboutism and pointing out no, I'm, I'm not saying that that's not wrong or that doesn't need to change and so forth. Okay, that but is you're wrong. not. But, but do you acknowledge that a lot of Hindus do this every time you like? If every well, time India, you point, we, at, we don't have stats on which religion uh, from India. Okay, India. So, right. so yeah. I mean, I I tend to think I tend to see that the Hindus in India are more nationalistic. That like you don't see the Muslims in India. I, I haven't seen, for example, Muslims of India coming out like, no, don't speak badly about India. The, India is great. So I think both Indian or Hindu would be accurate. But anyway, oh, in, let, but hold on, hold on. Indians, okay? So um, a lot of Indians, whenever you point out the rapes, the horrible rape statistics in India, they come out like, well, what about the United States? Or what about this? Or what about that? Do you acknowledge that that happens way too often? I, uh, judging from the statistics, like, well, like, regardless of the statistics, like, rape is horrible, bar none. Um, And if they can make laws to change that and to give more protection to Indian women, obviously I'm for it. Yeah, but I don't see that in any other countries. For example, if I actually I see that in like in Iran as well. Like, so, for example, in in Iran, when you when you mentioned a horrible situation, a woman rights situation, a lot of people that are defending of the Islamic Republic of Iran, they come in and say, like, but what about this country? What about that country? Right. But I don't see that in United States, for example, if in United States, you go out. No, not the people. Okay, so, yeah, I agree. That's horrible. Right. But once you point it out, the people of the United States, I'm not talking about the government, right? They don't come and say like, oh, you ra-, like if they're, they're very self-hating. Like, so if you like, oh, rape situation in, in the United States is bad, they believe you and they also start like hating on their own country and they're like, yeah, situation is really bad. I, I, I see but they don't, I see they don't come. I'm talking- I haven't seen Americans, for example, come and say like, oh, really? What about India, right? <laughs> you see the no, Indians not- say- I, I have seen that. I have actually received that. Well, that like, come. I think- like a born and raised American, but I've also seen like, oh, what about the Middle East from a lot of Westerners? And, right. and I'm including, you know, U.S. my okay. fellow U.S. But do citizen. you think, do you agree that this is a too much of a common defense of the rape culture? I'm not saying well, you're doing I, it. I see that, yeah, I see that as a common defense, yes, from Indians, but I also see it from Americans. Right. Uh, if I bring up the Native American situation. I haven't seen that, but might be, you might be right, okay? But it's just so... Such a bad tactic, okay? Every time they, every time you mention it, like what? How can the West claim like they are concerned about these situations, but then ignore what is happening within their own countries? And I did not see any global headlines for the human rights of Native American women, even as this was going on. Well, um, but during- but who? But you're talking to me. So you are you pointing out to me that? There's a hypocrisy when it comes to human rights from Western countries, because I've been saying that all the time. But the the West seems to be better able to hide it to present this image like that they're better. Because yeah. have you have you heard of what Native American women have gone through in the U.S. No, but until now? The, I have no, but but in the areas that I do focus on, I've noticed that that hypocrisy a lot. Like for example. Mm-hmm the situation not with just Yemen, but also their support for a lot of dictators uh, mm-hmm. and hu- abusers of human rights just because it serves their, uh, you know, foreign oh. policy interests, right? I, I so, also want to make so even yeah. Even if you, even, because I'm sure the examples of this hypocrisy is huge. So mm-hmm. obviously, I'm not going to know all of them, but the, what, the places that I have looked the places that I'm, the places that the subjects that I do cover, I've noticed that hypocrisy in different ways, right? So you you notice that with rape, I've noticed that with the bombing of children and children, the starvation yeah. starvation of civilians. 
by people that claim to be at the side of human rights. And not only that, I mean, this was a this turned into a comedy if it wasn't so tragic when they decided unanimously to put Saudi Arabia at the head of human rights council in the United Nations. Like, how, can you get any more stupid, path, pathetic than this, right? And it was the support of not just the United States but also Germany. Like, like I mean, yeah. come on. So I, yeah, I mean, but but I don't know. Like you, this is not really. I mean, I'm on the same side with you when it comes to pointing at this hypocrisy. Okay. So I wanted to I wanted to just mention this to any viewers. Like, approximately 87 percent of the cases were conducted by non-native men raping Native American women. Just anyone. Oh, it's Native American culture. It is not Native American culture. It's purely U.S. culture imposing itself on Native Americans, which has. Uh, I don't know if this. any. By the way, just for the record, I don't know if any of this is true. Uh, I'm just I sent assuming. you the uh, link, the PDF. I know, Amazing. man, but I can't just. Uh, you, I already we already went over this, right? But send me yep. the link for people that would do when it search or not. But I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying that, man. I, I don't. I'm not like I. I I, I do recognize a lot of great things that happened by the West. I also recognize Western countries, and I also recognize a lot of great things that happened by other countries. I don't. I'm not proud of any of these countries because of the great things they did. I'm proud of the individual. I I, I, cel I don't celebrate the countries for the great achievements. I celebrate the individuals who did accomplish them. Right. I also recognize a lot of horrible things that all of these countries did. Horrible things that Iran did. Horrible things that India has done. Horrible things that United States has done. And I don't condemn the entire country. Like you seem to be like, oh, Western countries this, did these evil things. I don't condemn Western countries for these evil things. I condemn Trump uh, and Obama. I condemn the people, the specific individuals responsible for the horrible things. The, I, I, yeah. I understand what you mean, but that doesn't work if the official policy caused these horrible things. And especially not if it was on purpose, because a lot of like I still, uh, don't, before, I, still don't, I still don't blame the entire country because a lot of people in the countries are against those policies, even if it's on paper. Just like in, just like in just because in India, for example, if I see a law that I don't like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to uh, condemn India, all of Indians for that law. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to condemn the entire country for a law that is they have in their books. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the country are agree with me on the fact that this law is, should be like blast. We have we still have blasphemy laws in India, right? Yeah. Okay, and a lot of Indians agree with me that those blasphemy laws should be removed. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna blame the entire country because they have blasphemy laws. I'm not gonna, you know, but I'm gonna call it out and call, say it's BS. And a lot of Indians agree with me on that, and a lot yeah, of Indians are. Not really what mm -hmm. about? like the Holocaust, of course you have to condemn Germany for the Holocaust. No, I don't condemn Germany. Especially if it was official. No, I don't condemn I, Germany. I'm just saying, like, you have to condemn the country for under, undergoing a, an official policy that led to I don't mass condemn the entire country for the Holocaust. But the government. Yeah, of course the government. Yeah, yeah. Do I? Are you asking me if I condemn Nazi Germany? <laughs> are you asking me that? <laughs> no, no, no. I was just saying, like, yeah, I'm not, the I government, wasn't, I wasn't, the uh, government that you're referring to is Nazi Germany. It's confused, like, country yeah. or government. Um, right. So, but your like, your example as one of the governments that was like didn't have that much, like it was all evil, right? But not all governments are that unanimous. Um, for example, in American, so for example, uh, Bernie Sanders, even though I don't like his socialism, he was always, always against the war, supporting the war in Yemen, right? And I, I and he's a politician, he's part of US politics, and I appreciate his stance against the war in Yemen, right? So he's part of the US government, and I admire his consistent consistency against war mm -hmm. so I don't even when it comes to the government I don't condemn the entire government right but and I mean, even with within, 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 with that one even with that one individual I appreciate his stance against war and I don't like his some of his social policies right okay, okay. 
but I, when it comes to official policy, I think that's where it gets tricky. Because then like, the majority are influencing a policy which is causing all, all this death and Not destruction. Really, but a lot of studies show that um, lobbyists in the United States have more influence on what passes as law than popular opinion. Yeah, at this point, even like foreign policy is up sale for foreign interests. Right. It's, so, uh, so it's they, not really from foreign uh, incursion at this point. So you can't really blame even the people. Uh, I don't like this how this trend is going because I read an article on the week. I'm not sure if it's entirely true because they cited something that I wasn't able to look at thoroughly, but they, they made the claim that um, every country that has tried the U.S. form of democracy either fell into revolution or dictatorship, besides the U.S. The U.S. form of democracy or, or U.S.-backed democracy? <laughs> US those, democracy. Those, I don't know, man, because if, I think you're talking about... What, what is the, your definition of U.S. form of democracy? Uh, the, the specific like uh, contours of the U.S. government, like the judiciary, uh, checks and balances system, legislature, and presidency instead of the parliamentary form uh, of Europe. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. What? Are, give me an example. Uh, I, I, I just read the article recently. I'm not sure. Like, I need to look through it more. Ah, so if you're if you're arguing if the parliamentary system is better than the U.S. system, I don't know. Maybe you're right. So I'm not going to fight that. But I would I, I would argue something that is even more. Um, representative of United States hypocrisy is not the fact that their their method of democracy doesn't work, is the fact that they don't even support democracy out of their borders, right? They, yeah. don't, they don't even back democratic regimes. They back dictators and human rights abusers. They want democ they say, oh, democracy is for our citizens, but apparently other people are not good enough for democracy. So that's, that's true. The realist theory of international relations. The whole point is to like you know get as much cheap resources as possible by putting in someone who's probably certified crazy, uh, have them rule, like just have the country like divide and conquer it as much as possible, and then extract the resources for your own citizens as cheaply as possible. See, the only the only time the United States was on the right side. <laughs> When it came to war, was World War II, right? And that well, was actually, I, I do and that was a, that was well, accidental, like <laughs> not U.S. government, but U.S. people actually uh, donated, I believe it was two hundred thousand pounds of food uh, during the latter stages of uh, British colonialism around eighteen ninety nine to nineteen hundred um, to help feed the Indian public when they were starving. So that is great. In fact, Native no, American. Okay, American, I was talking about. Sorry, I was talking about the U.S. government. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When it comes but to I'm just and, the US and only people. and also, yeah, of course, I'm not blaming the people, but I'm talking you know, about war. About when it comes to war, yeah. United States haven't hasn't been on the right side, almost ever. I mean, sometimes, <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I mean, the thing is, uh, uh, since World War II. But the thing is that World War II is that they was they were dealing with such a great evil that they've been trying to use the credit from being against evil from that ever since, right? Yeah. So they acting like they're on the side of World War II, uh, sorry, on the side of human rights since World War II, because they defeated such a great evil. Even ever since then, you've been bombing civilians left and right, but you're like, hey. Remember, we killed Hitler. We dis defeated Hitler, so we're human. We're human rights supporter. Like, uh, yeah, but ever since then, I mean, this would have been such a, you know, when the United States was fighting the Cold War against the Soviet Union, they understood that this is not just like a military fight. It's also an ideological fight, right. and the ideologies that were fighting with each other was capitalism versus communism. And United States won that war not because they defeated the USSR in a in a military fight, but they defeated USSR in an ideological fight, right? Yeah. But so, but they could have used that. They could have now gone on a new branding. Like this would have been my alternative writing of history, would be for United States to after winning that Cold War to now fight another ideological war 
in, in the world by being on the side of human rights everywhere and fight that that would have been their brand of fighting right obviously they didn't ever pick that fight well, because didn't they were Bill Clinton promote democracy in eastern europe he oh, pushed for dem democratic yeah, uh, but they're not consistent with that they're not consistent they're they're pushing for democracy for places where their government is their enemy you know it's not like it's obviously not for the sake of democracy for example look at iran and saudi arabia right. both are human rights abusers Right. Uh, but Iran, like, yeah, bring democracy to Iran. B what about Saudi Arabia? Oh, no, that's our ally. Right. So it's not <laughs> so it's not for the sake of democracy. Right. It's not for the sake of people. It's because if you, pro either. if you promote democracy in Iran, that's in your interest, because that against that's an against your enemy. Right. And so when you're speaking on uh, on uh, Saudi Arabia, I'm honestly very, very concerned about that nuclear technology. Yeah, as you like, I, I don't trust Joe Biden for that reason. Can you repeat the last part? You, you, because uh, you oh, got cut. The, uh, the current US government and the previous one by Obama set it up so that we're giving nuclear technology to Saudi Arabia, and I yeah. am very worried about that. Yeah, yeah, you didn't know. Especially, no, because. Well, I knew that the Saudis said that they're interested in it. I didn't know they moved forward with it. They, they said they're considering it, but did they actually give it to them? I don't think they give it to them. They're moving forward with it, yes. They have been moving forward with it. But they don't. They haven't given it to them yet. Like they don't. Saudi Arabia doesn't have nuclear technology right now. No, but but they're moving forward with it as we speak. Do you, do you define moving forward? Because my understanding is that they're just talking about it. So, uh, they approved it. Proved it there to give technology. All right, let's see how serious that is because that's scary. Because I if I would have thought that if this was actually an approved, sealed, and let's go forward with a thing, Iran would have made a lot bigger deal of, of this because I then, like it's approved and everything. Saudi Arabia is going to have nuclear weapons. Weapons. Um, there there are certain things approved. It's like the beginning stages. Okay. And uh, it, it seems like Trump just does not care what Saudi Arabia does, um, like the recent shooting um, in a U.S. military base. So the, the scary thing with that is not that the Saudis might use it in because the Saudis it's the are, terrorists might get it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the Saudi government is not very stable. Yeah. It's less stable than it has ever been. So a lot of people so are predict a lot of people are predicting that the Saudi the House of Saud is not going to be able to survive. They're running out of cash. And if oil yes, prices... This is, why, this is why I don't approve of Trump or Biden. I'm not sure where Bernie stands on this, but uh, Tulsi Gabbard wants to break any connection with Saudi Arabia. And that's mm -hmm. what I would prefer at this point because nuclear technology to Saudi Arabia yeah. is frightening because then Al-Qaeda or some new version of ISIS could get it and use it on either Israel, Europe... India, well, even Pakistan. Even if they I, don't use it, it's very frightening because once they have it, then they become they, a lot more relevant. I mean, yeah. they're not suicidal, so they're not going to use it. But just having no, no. it, uh, well, okay, like they're likely are not going to use it because they're not suicidal. No matter how much they uh, act like they're they suicidal. They have bombers. They, they put... No, I mean, the ones that end up becoming more powerful enough to hold a regime... Mm -hmm. They're not that suicidal. The ones that are suicidal are these terrorist groups that come in and out and they vanish after a while, right? Uh, but the thing, the, the thing is that even if they don't use it, mm -hmm. having it means now they have to take them even more seriously than before, yeah. which is really bad. Right? Or at least a threat to world power. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, my, uh, can, um, we've been on going on for almost three hours now. So can we do this another time? The rest yeah. Of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two hours and forty. No, minutes. it's only been two hours and forty-six minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I thought it's gonna be an hour, but that's fine. It's been fun. Can yeah. we do the rest later? Maybe another day. This yeah, sure. Uh, so I guess when is better for the rest? Uh, for the rest for you, like uh, as far as scheduling. Um, I don't know. Let's. I'm winning it. Can we discuss that in email? Uh. Okay.
I guess. But also, can we keep them? Because nobody's going to watch these if it's like three hours long. So we need to keep them like a little bit, like fo- like razor focus on a topic and just focus on a specific thing. I've noticed your longer videos get more traction than the short ones. Really? This is also XMA and others, yeah. Okay. All right, then. Maybe you're right. Okay. Let us know in the comment section if you prefer this one or the long long version or shorter version. Okay, also, subscribe. So not- subscribe, God damn it! Why? If you haven't subscribed, if you have watched this far into me rambling and, you know, we, us discussing this, and you're not subscribed, like, why would you not be subscribed? Like, you obviously enjoy listening to what we're saying, so you might as well subscribe. Why haven't you subscribed? Subscribe right now. Right now. Good. You too. There. Okay, so you want do you want the sources like as soon as possible? As far as no, no, you know, for just, your um, I mean I'll post it when you have the sources. When are you yeah. So Yeah. Well, I mean most of the sources I've already linked to you, um if you need them. But if you want no, to like... link these are these are texts, so just send me links for the text as well. Uh, okay, so okay, I'll I'll link them to for the Native American one and the news article regarding um, yes. Saudi Arabia's yeah. nuclear technology. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna stop recording this. Um, let me just say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. Care, everyone. Talk for yeah. And where can people find you? Hmm? Um, where? my blog, jarinjove.com, I guess. How can you spell that? Uh, uh, J-A-R-I-N-J-O-V-E dot com. All right. So if you want to and link to your Twitter and everything is over there. Um, Yeah, should be. Yeah. All right. On my blog. Oh, oh, so, yeah. And also don't tag me on Twitter. I'm not going to note. I don't notice like I only notice like 10 percent of them. Right. So that's not the best way to communicate. me. If you want to reach to me, uh, go on Patreon and message me on Patreon. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's the best way because those are very limited, so I could actually respond to those. All right. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and talk to you later. Thank you, everyone.